Let's Stop gaslighting okay. people. Yeah, yeah that's not good. Okay. Okay. One more, one more. You can see more, and you have audio, right? One more, one more. Yeah. Most of the audio is just me um, and my friends talking over this Because they were doing something in the background. I was kind of ignoring half of it. Clear arguments? I don't know. Why, why precise language is good? <clears throat> Come on. Just write it. Stress management. Yeah. Stress management. It, it really doesn't hurt to <laughs> it put it there. It has nothing to do with stress management, you dumbass. Precise stress management? Work. Language. Of word choices, I don't know. Okay, let's pause here for a second. What are you thinking? Uh, well, I'm trying to check where people are right now. I'm trying to clear that angle there. Okay. And hoping if while I swing this, I don't get peeked from there. From there? What is there? You mean tiles? Yeah, I mean, like, what do you call it? The little area in B-Man. I'm not really good with the names. Tiles, I think it is. So either tiles or B-Lobby? Which one you can B-Lobby, yeah. B-Lobby, that's the one. I'm trying to swing all the way down to there on the map. I can't really ping it. Okay. But yeah. Oh, we can't change that <laughs> So we haven't seen anything mid, and Vin is now pushing to A, so yeah. now we're rotating. But, the, but why go to CT spawn? Uh, well, I see um, our rain is really cleared up there, and our jet's really pushed mid. So it should probably help our defenders on B, because both of them are kind of going flanks. Okay, then let me ask you, what's the fastest way to get to B? Uh, probably, looking at it now, we'd probably go through mid and um, to market. Yeah. So, if your goal is to rotate to your, your defenders at B, the fastest way is, gonna go through, is to go through mid. Yeah. So, you accomplish two things. One is that if there was somebody in mid, or there was somebody in tiles, or there was somebody in B lobby, you can immediately help your teammate. So, like, if you're jet, find somebody in tiles, find somebody in B lobby, you can help your jet immediately, even before you get to get to uh, bump site B. Yeah. And then the second thing is that you accomplish a much faster rotation. So generally, uh, okay. you only want to rotate through CT spawn if you absolutely need to be safe, or like if you don't want to take any risks. But right now, there is no risk because you, you have your your team has full control of A lobby because you're going to push through. And your team has full control of mid because your jet push is pushing through right now. So there's only really three places they can be, which is yeah. So it's either they're uh, still in T spawn, which is unlikely. B lobby and garage, lobby and garage. Um, exactly. Just right. needed. Mouth. Wall and garage. Please write that. Vocal cords. <laughs> okay, now let's pause here for a second. What are you thinking? Hmm. Well, I see my Sage pushing kind of Gowers there, and there is already Yuri on site, but no one else. So most of the, uh, most of the other teammates should be in Gower, should be in, um, what is the place called? <laughs> Those are the A little yeah. Here. What are you thinking? Right, right before what? you actually, actually see the Euro, before you actually see the Euro, what are you thinking? Uh, probably should try and wall, wall off it, so, I, so we can actually take some space on... B. Okay. What are you gonna wall? And try and get a good, try and get a good position. Try and wall it off so they don't have sidelines. Okay. Let's go to. Let's go to the drawing board. Let's talk about what we're gonna wall. So, our sofa is here. Our sage is somewhere in market. Our who's the other person? Jet. Our jet is also in market, and now we're about to turn this corner here. We are the Phoenix, and our arena is, uh, I don't know, somewhere in mid. Hey, mid link. Mid link. Okay. So, where are we going to put this wall? Uh, from the corner of mid markets all the way to the corner of the B main. Uh, so, like this? Yeah, like that. Okay. Makes sense. And then, after you put this wall, where are you going to go? Uh, what I, w I don't remember what I've done, but what I, w what I would do right now is um, probably push up to a lot, you know, where the, right in front of the server, in that corner there. So here? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Any other ideas? Any thoughts? 
Uh, not really. Yeah, let me give you an alternative. One is that your sofa is like semi alone. So I think it would be a good idea to, to get to your sofa so that maybe your sofa can come here. So now you, you have uh, one person or, or, or multiple angles. One angle, sofa is on lane. You're on the B stairs. And then you have one person, let's say the Sage at market. And then Jet can play with the Sage or she can rotate out or something like that, whatever the case may be. Uh, okay. So one option that you guys would take different angles, like multiple, take advantage of multiple angles. Okay, and then we another option. Kind of, we kind of take more space like that as well. True, yes, exactly. No, no one's watching that little hallway there on front of B. Yeah. So if we actually take that. Then another thing is that, is that I see that we have three teammates already watching B, and I'm assuming that they already have kept the enemies like inside garage. Like the, the enemies have not pushed out, outside the garage yet. Because all three teammates are alive and they're all just kind of sitting around waiting. Knowing yeah. that, I'm kind of expecting that all five of the enemies are either in B lobby or in B main. Yeah. Five people are here. So. Uh, I'm sorry, so uh, I'm sorry, sir. So, uh, can you give me like three minutes? Sure. I need to create hello with some of them. So, I'm really sorry. Uh, uh, what do you call it? the people cleaning our dogs are all here today? So I just need to help them for like five seconds. Okay. Okay, so we were talking about we were talking about um, your multiple options to for this rotation because you have so much map control because your team is fully alive and because you know where basically all five of them are or generally are, right? Yeah. So one option is that instead of rotating to your already stacked team like on B, like you already have three people on B watching garage, instead you can go and help your arena and. By helping mm -hmm. you in, you you keep the enemies contained in B main and contained in B lobby. Yeah. So anywhere that they go, they have to get funneled through a choke and fight a one v two or one two v two or whatever. Yeah. So let's try and take as much space as possible on the map. Right. So you're here as Phoenix. You have another option to go up your arena, and then play. Let's say you guys play inside mid link. The arena comes here. You come here. Whatever. And you both watch the garage exit. Yeah. Or if the enemy, let's say, let's say the enemy, like they, they come backwards, then they fight you guys. Now your team can push into garage or maybe they rotate through mid to support you guys. Alternatively, yeah. if they do commit to this garage push, let's say they're in garage, all five of them will push out into, into B and then eventually they want to go lane, go CT, whatever. Like go into site, then you guys, you with the the Reina, will continue lurking behind them, lurking, 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 lurking until you finally get behind them, when you flank them. And we have an advanta advantageous, we call it numbers, two v whatever. Yeah, so you're always playing like a buddy system with your Reina, so neither of you guys are alone. If you guys get caught in a one v one, the other person can force that to become a two v one. All yeah. around, it's just it's very strong because like you're, you're the whole time. You're, you you and your team are constantly keeping them contained. But like whichever whichever direction they go, they have to run into your team. Yeah. Okay. So, I would personally go with this option and reinforce our arena until until like a couple of seconds later, you actually saw the euro already on backside. Then okay, now there's no point in looking because it seems like the enemy team has already pushed out of garage. So the Yori is committed, because that was his TP. Oh, so that's how he got in? Makes sense. Mm. Oh, cords. So right about <laughs> here, we see that Yori is already back sites. So now it seems like it's less of a concern to watch Garage. Now I'm really concerned about my Silva fighting a 1v1 without anyone to help him. Mm. <laughs> so what could happen is that he could actually could die from this 1v1, and We'll lose control of sight actually. So actually, the Please jet recognizes <laughs> this court. really well. <laughs> and he dashes immediately to the Sova to force this to become a 2v1. Mm. 
tongue. Okay, yeah. So now your job right now is to play off your sage and to stall the people in garage for as long as possible so that your silver and jet can deal with the one person on, on site and so that the Reyna can continue getting value by flanking already. She's picked up one kill. Now all she has to do is kind of just camp. Yeah. There you go. No, we don't need to eat actually, but we need... This... What are you thinking here? Uh, well, I'm thinking that uh, playing a bit aggro here is... kind of decent. So my Sage does have a good angle at the top. And it's only two people in garage at the moment. Or be main at the moment. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go back to the drawing board. Okay, so Yoru is still somewhere backside. Uh, somebody died, I'm assuming your jet's still alive, whatever, she's fighting the Yoru. The Sage is, is, in, is in market, and now you are here as Phoenix. And then, oh, yeah. another person? There's two other people, okay, whatever. So, there could be somebody in garage. We, we know that this part of garage is safe. We don't know if somebody's waiting here. Maybe the enemy winner could be here or something. Yeah. So, based on... Yeah, I just picked right up now. a kill, so is that... she's like, she's 150 HP. Okay, so she's 150 HP. So it's most likely... This is the... And I've, I don't know, I'll say it. Uh, disadvantageous for me to push that, action. Why is that? Hmm. Because uh, I'm, 50, I'm 100 <clears throat> HP and she's 150 and there's two in there. Okay, let's, let's assume that uh, it's the Killjoy. Let's say this was Killjoy. Oops. Would you still push this? Uh, I would say yeah, somewhat, yeah. Why yes? Why why somewhat? Or, yeah, um, why somewhat? Well, it kind of depends. Uh, I don't know what she, if she's starting now and turning to this being destroyed. I don't know if she still has... She's with her right now, right next to her. Or if she's done at her position at all. Yeah. Anything else? Or oh. is that it? Uh, that's pretty much right. Yeah, so I think you're on the right track that because you don't have information and you already have the bomb down, the bomb down is basically right in front of you here, then there's no need to actually push and take a risk. Yeah. And even if you were to take a risk, this is the long risk to take because this is just giving the enemy a 1v1. When you have a sage right behind you, but she's not going to be able to peek because she is too far away from you. And based on the angle, you're, you're going to take a moment like when Sage is like in garage, or not going in garage, um, if S Sage stays market, like she's not going to be able to see the Killjoy. Yeah. She's going to see like this part of garage. And that's it. Yeah. She doesn't ex actually see this Killjoy. So what could possibly happen is that you, you're inside here, you're inside garage, and you fight this Killjoy 1v1. In a very committed fashion. So if I lose this, I pass. If I lose the one everyone, I possibly lose the round. Yes, exactly. But if I win, I gain information. Uh, you kind of yes. got, got to, you kind of got to balance the risk for that. Of that, I think. see. Yeah, so whenever you, whenever you try to make a play, you got to balance your success rates of it. The thing is, that you don't really take a risk because the bomb is down. Yeah. The only thing you have to do is just play for Sage and then crossfire the bomb. Because you know that Emmy has to pick up the bomb eventually. So eventually they have to run into your crossfire. Yeah. Like I could stand somewhat directly below my Sage on the bottom there. Uh, so if you want to talk about like ideals, about like who wants to play where. How do I get rid of this stupid bomb now? This bomb is like stuck. So Euro's backside, Jet's fighting the Euro. If Sage, if we assume that Sage stays market, then actually we want our Sage to hide, if possible, while we play, uh, let's say we play close, let's say we play here. So that's what's going to happen. We want ourselves to make first contact. When someone comes here and then 
from here they pick up the bomb when you hear when you hear them coming you'll push out like this way you swing around this corner and now you guys fight on one v one like this and then the sage will peek out of market and force this to become a two a two v one yeah since they're they already peeking at me okay because um, based on the angles and positioning, if the Sage were to peek first, this is what it would look like. If Killjoy comes to here, and now the, the Killjoy and the Sage are in a bombing one, you might possibly be too late. Or yeah. you'll, you'll be like within, almost within the Killjoy's line of sight automatically. Whereas your Killjoy looks at the Sage, which is just slightly higher, and then just aiming slightly lower, now, now the Killjoy will be aiming at you. But if you... Yeah will want to peek first while the sage is hiding. Now the killjoy is looking to the left side of the garage and suddenly she has to like flick to the right side of the garage door into mid market. Okay. So that would be ideal and it depends on how acquainted you are with your sage and if sage knows how to play contact correctly. But what I would actually do in this, this situation is assume that the enemy doesn't immediately pick up the bomb. What I would do is I would help my jet. I'll come lane, help my jet. Make sure that she mm. wins this 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 one v one, forces it to become a two v one, so that it frees up resources, so that the jet can come rotate, help the sage, so that afterward I don't have to worry about a euro backside. If I just stay here, and then the jet dies, now I have to worry about euro possibly flanking behind me. Possibly flanking this way, and then it becomes a lot more difficult to hold the bomb. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Axe bomb will get it. Okay. So back to VLC. So. So the action. Yeah. Yeah. So where you're standing, you're taking. You're possibly going to take a bombing one here, and. Your only hope right now is to win it because if you if you lose this, then now your team like loses like a lot. <laughs> well, like a, it has a high chance of losing the round. Yeah. We actually do need T's to talk. No, we get that. We get that. You really lucky that Koji didn't trade you. What? What? Probably should have died. So is this needed? Like, do you need a dictionary or what? At this point, your team. Okay, she has bomb. Like here. Uh, now it's time to just wait to get A. You can, uh, you or can cut off the rotation, need... perfect. So, like, Sage on my uh, nose. Do you need a dick to scenario? Let Sage go. <laughs> What's... So, looking at the minimap, as soon as you saw the killjoy leave, Sage automatically knows. Great. Like here. And she uh, needs to rotate and help cut off, cut off the rotation. You can, uh, you can write. So, she goes mid to make sure that killjoy does not run tiles. Gearing tool. Tiles is. Some okay. shit. Yeah, go read the great. financial time span. I'm Perfect. Fine, uh, I'm kind of clapping people right now. Right. My podcast. Uh, no, that's not some copy. That's not copy. Um. Uh, just right now, so you don't need to. Also, how do you decide between um? Quick question. How do you decide between forcing a round? If you win the first round, do you always force, or should you save for second round? I mean, third round. Generally, you should buy second round. Okay. Or you should buy. Just enough to win the round, if you want to be like mid max and be greedy a little bit, and then maybe even buy have one person buy a gun on third round, but that gets to be more, more specific, I guess. Yeah. But generally, you should buy second round. Um, what I like to do is that actually, since I'm a very frugal player, I'll wait to see what my team buys. If everybody buys, then I'll actually save my my pistol for a bit. Yeah. So so that I can be that player who buys on third round and play on that the one person with a gun. Or yeah. or maybe even save for an op or something. Okay. Stop the cap, like Podcast. Keep it keep it uh, real. Podcast, what else? <coughs> so let's see, I Rain has about anything yet. Podcast is just listening. So about the yeah, shorty, it's good, really though. interesting. You listen how you learn how to communicate like others, like they communicate to you. And are, and are you gonna do that? Shut up, I'm not gonna do any of this shit. Okay, I'll pause here and let me ask you, what's, what are you thinking? What's going to do your mind? Uh, right now I decided to force, and I think my, my sage is pushing B. 
I don't know what my Jess or my uh, Ren are doing. So I think I should go help my service since he's playing a pretty dangerous position where he can get punished really easily. Okay. Because he, he can't really get out. Especially okay. if uh, they push mid. Okay, and I can sense. play a uh, rafter since I have a decent gun. A rifle. Okay. What else? Um, We're not really set up anyway. Immediately. Okay. Uh, so a couple things. One is that... Uh, well, your rain is AFK, okay, well, but... Are you gonna do that? Because you're choosing to buy a Phantom, and you still have your Ghost from the previous round, I would throw the Ghost at a teammate who can use it. So specifically, your Reyna. Reyna is AFK, yeah. So that when she comes back from AFK, now she has a free pistol upgrade. Because you don't really need a pistol, you have a Phantom. Yeah. Let's see, so we started rotating. She's back now. She's coming. She's working to A. Okay, so now the second thing is that when you have the big gun, you want to be in as many fights as possible. Or at least yeah. you want that big gun to be in as many fights as possible. So basically, seek out engagements and seek out engagements with your team. So that, let's say you were to die for whatever reason, you get one tapped, whatever. Now your teammate has the big gun and your teammate can, can continue, like that big gun can continue being, continue to be useful throughout the round. Like your teammate can pick it up, another teammate can pick it up, whatever, whatever. Or the teammate um, gets a kill with your gun, kills the enemy. Now you, your teammate picks up the enemy's gun, etc. Right? Then these types yeah. of like advantages start to snowball. So rule of number one is try to get your your big gun and as many engagements as possible. Third thing yeah. is that when you do have a big gun against an eco round. You want to abuse the fact, like, again, we're taking as many engagements as possible, but also taking long range engagements. Because you have a rifle, you can basically kill almost anything unless they, they buy armor from like yeah. any range, like one tap, right? I mean, none of my team forced, and the enemy is probably saving, so I'm basically playing like Superman right here, where I just have to get, well, I just have to take engagements. Right, but you also you don't want to take engagements alone as well. So, what you don't want to have happen is that. Let's say you decide to take your Phantom and you push B, pushing B by yourself. And if you kill everyone, great, but there's going to be that one time or a couple of times where you'll get one tapped by a Sheriff or whatever on some eco round, and now the enemy team has a gun. Yeah. So it's also important to not lose the gun to the enemy team. Yeah. Okay, so... Mm. So all these rules in mind, and we want to take as many engagements as possible. We want to take long range engagement, as long as like long range engagements as possible, and we want to abuse the fact that we have a, a rifle or a big gun compared to the enemy who are, are on a full save or most like most likely a full save. So yeah. what I would do in this situation actually is that because Sol is so far away, and uh, Rain is already coming to help Sova, I think our best bet is actually. To ask your jet, ask your sage, like, hey, push mid with me. Let's take mid control. And it's very easy to do because you have three people plus a phantom. Yeah. Against classics or pistols. And then once oh, yeah. you have mid control, let's say let's say you fight for mid and then you you kill like two, three people because you have just straight up better guns and more people stack mid. Or the alternative is that if there's nobody in mid, now your team has mid control. Now you can rotate really fast to anywhere that you need to be. So for example, if the enemy's team, if they start to do an A push, they start to pressure your Silva, they start to pressure your Reyna, now you have the option of rotating really fast through mid to go cat and like reinforce them within like, I don't know, five seconds or whatever. Or you have the option to flank them from top mid to A lobby. Mm. And basically keep the enemy contained. I have heard a common phrase in this map that mid control is you just win the game if you have mid control because it forces the enemy to push into small choke points which if they push through they're open to many angles. I agree, yes. Okay. So you should try to abuse some um, things like that on the maps. Yeah. Map control is really yeah. important in this game. So ascent is it's kind of a extreme scenario where like mid control basically makes or breaks the round. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Right. Yeah. So let's see how you play this out. Hang off with friends. Take my phantom. 
So I like the idea that you're contesting mid. The problem is Jet's a little bit too far behind. That's okay. At least Jet can just pick up the Phantom. I did tell us to take it in case. I'll also be careful of nothing about peeking too. So generally when you peek is that you want to peek with A and D as much as possible. Here you actually peek with like W and D. So you're going like diagonally. And on top of that you're also walking. So that's probably the main reason that you basically get one tap by the marshal, is that you're walking and you will walk peeking. Oh, yeah. Uh, diagonal peeking other. So, let's go to. I should have also been there because he's already pre aim in that angle. Yeah, generally you don't want to walk peek unless you have a specific reason to do so. All right. So the sage is top mid, and we are on the bottom, and if we go diagonally like this, especially while walking, this is going to be very easy for any martial player to hit. But imagine if you hit close to here, you hug this wall, then you swing out this way. So that you're, you're holding D instead of W and D. Like W and D is this way, D is just that way too, right? Yeah. That way it becomes more difficult because you're, you're at full speed instead of like half speed. You have full speed so, in one direction uh, instead of half speed in this direction plus half speed in this direction. Yeah. So the peak in a movement right there is really bad. What I did. Yeah. Don't shift peak unless you're trying to stay quiet for some reason. And even then you can still peak at full speed just as long as you stay within a certain threshold. And also try to peak with A and D as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, sleep. Okay, let's Counter. see what we bought. Um, how many kills survived? Done. Did you buy from the safe since I yeah, so everyone has a gun, it's over, it's fine. I, gotta... I think the enemy is broke as well. Hard oh. you don't have time. Well, I guess we never press tab. Um... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I got you, bro. <clears throat> so I should check uh, eco, the econ a bit more. Okay, so now we see this, yeah, you should definitely press tab a lot, because especially in the buy phase, like that, that dictates like what gun you're gonna buying, what loadout you're going to buy, and how you're going to play this round. Here the, yeah. we see that uh, three of our teammates are buying, plus Sora who has a Spectre, and the enemy team is, is basically going to be forced to eco. What I, I would actually do, I would actually play, like, uh, take a little bit of a gamble and not full buy, and just kind of bonus this round in preparation for the next round. Mm -hmm. Since you, you don't necessarily need five guns against five pistols to win the round. Yeah. Callan is more often. So for now something to think about is team economy. Um, <clears throat> sleep. <coughs> sleep more. Interesting <laughs> wall. They just gave us free mid control, honestly. They did not yeah, free them. mid control. What do we do with free mid control? Okay, yeah. Pushing to mid? Yep. Exactly. Oh damn, must have been a huge bait. Yeah, that's pretty good. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, calendar. I guess an extra. Yeah. Um, you tell you. need reminders. You need, um... Notes. Like, you need notes. Post-it no, post notes on your fridge. Yeah, you do need post-it notes on your fridge. That's a very important one, honestly. Oh my god, we're giving them sight for free. Hello? Right, make play around the floor. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Right. I don't like how we didn't peek it out the first time. Like, this is a perfect pop flash opportunity. We pop flashed, and then we backed out. Then, what was the point of the flash? Mm. Then, okay. We, yeah, we put a wall to have Pro Sage, so we can isolate this 1v1. Nothing. And then, let's see, when did he, no. did she get the kill? She already killed the guy. We don't know, maybe there's another person pushing the sage. Nothing. 
Okay, so we know it's pretty clear. Unless they're in the smoke. Um, well, this is the one one that we didn't really have to take. So we were say Sage is still at CT. Sage is unfortunately exposed and we're kind of stuck here healing. Okay. Let's pause here for a second. What are you thinking in this situation? What I'm gonna so because I see that there's either the Rainer pushed back and saw my guys there because I see their question mark. So I'm trying to stall so they can get the pick so I can push them to the side safely with my ultimate. Okay, so you're just gonna wait here until your team rotates over? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the right play. Basically, you just want to sit here, wait for your team to rotate, push, kill the guy in garage, so you don't worry about garage anymore. Then you can ult and push your team. So, while you're sitting here, you do have to worry about the enemy pushing you, because the bomb's planted, oh. there's people on site. Say again? The only thing I'm scared about is that they did kill the Sage, so maybe the Rainers ego peeking and gonna push me from behind, from CC side. You just saw the rain in garage though. Hmm? Oh, fuck. The rain is in garage. <laughs> the rain just killed your sage from garage. Uh, Here's the rain. I don't know. Okay, so the rain is in garage. She dismisses. She probably gets spotted from your teammates in mid. And then we decide to wait. So now actually there's two people in garage. There's a third person who could be on site. So we still still do still have to worry about someone can come from B stairs and somebody can come from lane. So we're peeking garage here, but actually I would just close this angle and just hide. Hide in this corner to our right. Yeah. Still one more in garage though. I'm not sure about this ult. We don't know if someone's pushing B stairs, and now that person could be camping on body. Do you have? Do you actually have to use the resources needed tab? Yeah. So it all worked out in the end, but it could have gone very bit poorly. Like let's say for example, that last person there, this boom kills your jet, and then pushes out of your line of sight. Now. Your ult is going to be gone in like 2 seconds, and now the Brim's camping your body, kills you next. And now it's the only one, and now it's like super losable. Yeah. So, whenever you decide to ult, make sure that you actually have someone who can actually watch over your body. Here, you still have two teammates pushing through, they're not even in garage yet, they're still in B-lobby. So like, you still have to wait for your full team before you can actually ult. No taking. What One does enemy they have? They don't have anything. Do you, have, do you actually have to use the resource? No. The part of our rest have been stack A. Why do we hold stack A? Why do we hold stack A? You should, right. you should put short and accurate. Uh, yeah, was, I guess it was a goodish idea. Spike down A. Okay. You pause here. What are you thinking? Uh, well, they're pushing A, so I just want to try and get as much as once as possible, so I break the door. Okay. What else? And then, uh, and then I want to go to my jets. I want to flash around, and we can both peek, dual peek it, and maybe she can come back to A safety. If she's already used to it. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not really. Okay, so I think you have the right idea. You want to help our jets. The problem is that jet is way high priority. Then breaking this door. At any second now, I would expect our jet to be in a gunfight, and while we're breaking this door, we're not being useful to help our jet. Yeah. So you can leave this door breaking job to like the solver or to someone else who's rotating over, but right now our jet is like trapped in mine. So she needs someone to help her as fast as possible. Yeah. Now the problem is we're still sitting on this door, we're still not helping our jet, she's already shooting at somebody, and we're not able to swing with her, swing just yet. Perfect, next, one more, one more, just, let's just put two. I don't know what that Yoru is doing. <laughs> this we don't have to push, Actually, nobody yeah, can trade us out. Taking... So originally, let's see here, one more, one more. it's a 4v3, we kill this Yoru because he's dumb, 
Now it's a 4v2. Short and active. Then we force yeah. this 1v1 here. Same thing with Sage. Sage is pushing too, click it too quickly. This, the bomb is down. We have the enemy containing A lobby. We just need to keep them trapped in A lobby. So if you have the bomb, you should stop playing a bit more passively, right? Yeah. Especially if you have more numbers. Yes. When you're yeah. up in numbers, you want to play a numbers game. You want to play up your teammates, trail out your teammates, and eventually a th a three v two becomes a two v one becomes a one v zero. Yeah, because even though I do hit the rain a bit, both me and the sage die now. The jet's like forty HP and server's one hundred fifty. Yeah. So now it's time for the big issue. One is think about map control, and two is contain the enemy. Or rather, keep the enemy contained. Third is, don't take risks when you don't have to. Okay. Okay. So here we're, we're pushing, and it's fine to push if you if you if you really have to. But here we don't have to because bomb is down and it's a four v two, and we know what the last two people are. We just have to wait for them to come to us. They have to come to us. Right, they're, they're the attackers. We're just defending. Mm. So by you, like you, you force this one one, and now you're taking a gamble that you're the you're gambling the round on this one one basically. Whereas otherwise, if you just play normally, if you play safer, the round is like more guaranteed to be won. Yeah. Without having to like pop off like that, without having to actually win the one one, it's much easier to win a two v one. And that's like a lot safer, a lot more guaranteed. So yeah, you and your Sage are like pushed up a little bit too aggressively. Now your Jet is alone again. Now your Sova is alone. And they're both separated. So what could happen, what I expect is that the Reyna and the Sage, if they play correctly, they'll push together, push the, the Jet, because they know that Sova was mid, because that's where the ult came from. Push the Jet, 2v1, easy to win, get the bomb. They can even they can even take the bomb and run back to T spawn and do a little fake too if they wanted to. So let's see what happens. Yep, white swing with the sage. Now your silver is alone. And now it's like it's basically lost. Oh, I don't know. Fucking, how do I write this? Unfortunately, enemy team is dumb. And now it's like now it's up to your Sova to win a one v one, right? Whereas whereas otherwise you basically had the round one if you just played safer. Oh my god. Okay, what I need, what I need. Study like, like a notebook and a notebook app on your phone. I don't know what that was honestly. Like, I think you're just burning a whole bunch of utility because you're you're worried about a push. Okay, now you've heard the TP behind you. Hopefully, hope. See, that's the time you should have flashed, but I don't know what the heck is you always doing. Snipe is out. Like, what the heck? Oh, yeah, okay, he's trying to flash, but. <laughs> you always need something to. Just pause when we hit a TP. We hit a TP. TP is behind us. And then he shows the minimap. So at this point, in Jet, like, really shows that, yes, I'm shooting at Euro. Please help me. Please flash. Don't drive peek. But we get the kill anyways. Okay, great. Okay, put on the smoke. Ooh, smoke's gone. Get out of here. That's... You, you stuck around for too long. As soon as the smoke dissipated, I wouldn't even commit to this. Because you're, you're, there's two people on the screen. Even if you kill the killjoy, the brim's gonna kill you. Yeah. I would just like, just back off with your teammate. You res. I do get this. Your team should have traded you out there. I kind of got a bit. I kind of got did get a bit tilted because my. If you saw, I couldn't move because of the server. But I don't blame for that. Sova's actually trying to pick a man. That's why. Yeah. But his movement's a little, a little wonky. Okay, let's hey, we'll, talk about your teammates a little bit here. After you die, it's still perfectly winnable as long as your team plays correctly. So we have a Sage in Hell, we have a Sova in Heaven, okay, Sage is going Generator, and we have a Jet close to our. So what we actually want to do, if you if you were like your teammates, right? if you were any one of your teammates, you would want your Jet to make first contact. 
because mm. that's where the Las Vegas fight is going to be. Let's, let's talk about angles. I do know some stuff about angles, such as angle advantage and how somewhat that works, but not much, to be honest. One second. Hello? Yeah, hold on one second. I'm messaging this person. Same thing. Okay. okay, so we have a silver with an op on heaven. We have a sage at generator and we have a jet holding close. And then these are the angles that they would be able to watch. Yeah. Here, here, and let's say if, if Sage picks from Jenner, this is her angle, right? Now, well, actually, let's say that she swings out a little bit from Generator, like, this would be her angle. And there's still not a straight line. Hopefully the same as Sova. Okay? Now the question you want to ask yourself is, where do all these lines intersect the most? On sides right there. Here, right? Yeah. So we want to wait until the enemy gets into here, gets into like this box, which is perfectly Jet's line of sight. So basically, we want to wait until Jet makes first contact, then we swing out a Sova, then we swing, we swing out a Sage. So that when the enemy, the enemy's in A main, they get into this box, and then they get shot at the Jet, so they deal with the Jet, they look at the Jet, now, the Sage and the Sova will shoot whoever is in this box here, focused on the jet, in a perfect 90 degree angle. Mm. Okay, so what you don't want to have happen is that somebody comes in, they're in A main, and then let's say they get to here. And then they take a one one with the Sova, then they take a one one with the Sage, then they push out and they take a one one with the jet. Three roaming ones in a row. Right. So you want to avoid these fair fights, you avoid giving out roaming ones to, to the enemy team, and we want to force unfair fights as much as possible. We want to force the 2v1 to happen, force the 3v1 to happen. Yeah. Okay, and the way you do that is with timing, positioning, and angles. But also mostly timing because it's all about peaking as soon as someone else is in an engagement. Okay. Mm. So if you were your team, that's what should happen. Yeah. And then hey, let's see what actually happens. Team. Here, Jet's still waiting. So it was okay because he has an op. He can like he can back up really quickly. He doesn't have, he doesn't have to like commit to this angle very hard. As long as he does get one taps. Now the Jet and the Sage line up, which is very unfortunate. Jet got a little antsy here. Jet should just wait. Because by peeking out here, like Sage was actually taking one run with, with the with the brim, which really shouldn't have happened. Then Jet got a little antsy, peeked out, and now she also died. And you look at the brim, the brim didn't have the justice cost here at all the entire time. He looked at the Sage, shot the Sage, kept shooting, and automatically shot Jet. What did you just say to me? I recorded and now so is kind of alone with the op. Well, you're being extremely sexist right now. It's just a meme. You're being sexist. Fuck you. That's taking. Mm -hmm. See, do we have all well, for this? We do actually, right okay? Now. It's just a meme. You're Generally, when I have Altus Phoenix, I always think to make a player fit. Hmm. So, I can tell my team, hey, I'm going to ult mid, hey, I'm going to ult B, hey, I'm going to ult A, whatever. Ult somewhere to help your team get and take map control. You're being sexist. Mm. So, here we're taking a duel, but technically we already have an ult, so it's actually a little bit disadvantageous for us because we take the, 
the risk is higher where now we risk dying with an ult, whereas we otherwise we could have made a play with that ult for this round. Test taking. But you get the kill, that's great. She's gonna res. Hopefully you know this. That's why you put the wall, I assume. That's such a shit tip. I would say as soon as she reses, I would just like alt and push. Assuming mm. that the, the jet is like understands and on the same page that is if you guys just push push with your alts and push mid into tiles together, you can probably deny the, the, the alt or deny the res rather. Because I do see that my rain has cleared um a lobby there and my jet cleared um that long angle. Yep. So the only place where the enemies can be is in the B lobby. Yeah, they could technically be top mid, it's just unlikely. And yeah, most likely they're either tiles or they're B lobby. Or they're in yeah. T spawn, which is also unlikely. Shit, tip. <laughs> you see true again. Here we're ulting, but it seems like we didn't really communicate that with our team oh, because a... we kind of ulted while Bring Jet went in a different direction. Jesus. Okay, so now we get information that there's two people be lobby, they're just waiting. We want to help our in as fast as possible. Make sure to get the right Unfortunately, she picked a little bit too early. <laughs> now we know where the last guy is. Now we use the weights. I'm using the weights. This is the one, one, one that you didn't have to take. Hmm. So what you should have done I is like... Yep. I kind of wanted to hold the angle. But I didn't know where she was, if she was going to push or something. And I was trying to wait for my Sage, but she did push me. So let's pause here. Jet just died. We know where this, the last person is. Let's go to the drawing board. Okay, so we are in mid. The last person here, Sage, is around this corner. And then we have, you know, our other Sage is in B main and our Sova or whatever is uh, somewhere B, whatever. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, so here, if we were to push into mid link like this, like eventually we get to here, and then Sage peeks out here, we're in a really committed 1v1. Generally, when you're up in numbers and you're, you're, uh, have the advantage basically, you want to not take risks like this. Like, don't commit if you don't have to commit. Yeah. So it's great that you win the 1v1, but it could very easily go the other way. Where, like, if she kills you, now all this is is like free, and like no longer in your team's control. Your yeah. sage is like gonna push through this way, but by then this, the enemy sage could could have gone through mid, or could have gone the through second, possibly do catwalk. The second they, the second I die, if I die, they, they I lose half the entire map, and sage is basically winnable since she has res, and no one's pushing her at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so if you die, or if any of your teammates die, then it slowly becomes more and more losable. Whereas otherwise, if you just play with your team, then like it's basically guaranteed to win. Unless you like it's uh, you get super outplayed or something. Mm -hmm. So again, this goes back to the idea of keep the enemy contained. We know where the enemy is. Where the Phoenix? Where are oops, where are in mid? We just need to make sure that she does not push through mid link. Eventually, your Sova, the Sage, will hopefully swing together. They'll swing outside this way into B lobby, looking this way, looking that way. Right? And then when they do swing, then, okay, no longer do we have to, like, let's say if we originally hold here, and just make sure to cut this off so that if she pushes through, then we cut off her rotation. But when our teammates do swing out, then we have a queue to push into mid link. So that we're pushing mm -hmm. at the same time as our team, instead of one at a time. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. your best bet is just to either play here, this is the safest, or play here. Which gives you a better option in case that she goes T-spawn. And let's say you hear her going T spawn, then you can swing out at the same time that your teammates swing out. Okay. 
Okay. But otherwise, basically, you just keep it contained, and then, like, she has nowhere to go. Especially, you, you, you guys are camping the bodies at B, then she is not going to be able to have an opportunity to res. Yeah. Okay. So, back to VLC. So luckily we do get the kill, but again, things could have gone poorly. You can't always rely on your aim, can we every single, every single game? What else? I don't know, it depends on what your issue is though. If you have issues with time management, you advice from Profit. General help. Yeah, that's me. AKA Andy boy. So, you're a phoenix. Phoenix should mm -hmm. love no. smokes. Yeah, that's me. You see a smoke? What are you thinking here? Well, it's already made like 5 seconds in slow. 6 seconds, they probably pushed up mid. Okay. And I see my jet behind me. I should probably, probably should have done instead of rotating. It's probably flashed to the smoke because if, yeah, it's probably phoenix. Best part of the kid is the flash. Okay, so mm. so you're gonna pop flash out of the smoke? No. Or are you, Don't end you, that. you said flash. What are you gonna flash? Uh, probably flash jump over and flash left at the same time. Okay, so so then you are right, planning. Try, to... try to peek that that angle on the lobby. So then, okay. I'm really confused. Let's go to the drawing board. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm not really good at uh, talking that much. Or explaining things. Explaining okay. things, really. We have a smoke here. We're in Cubby. Our server is, uh, let's say, Micah or something. We're in mid. Okay. Where are we going to flash? Where's the flash going to end up? Hold up. Stream is loading. Okay, oh, there he goes. Can you see my screen? Um, probably want to stand on. Right in front of the box there, in the smoke. So we're gonna stand here. I know, on the left of it, right in front of the box. So here. Yeah, right there. Okay. And flash right. And then flash ends up here. Yeah. Okay. What because else? most likely um, people are gonna be looking at mid bottom because they're not gonna be ordering above smoke. Yeah. So I want to try and full flash them. Okay, great. So Phoenix loves smokes because he is like one of the few agents who can perfectly pop flash out of a smoke. Mm. Him and, and him and like a KO to some extent and a Sky to some extent. All three of you guys can like pop flash out of smokes and abuse the enemy team for relying on these smokes. They're relying on the smoke to keep you controlled, controlled basically and inside cubby or inside cat or in tree or whatever while they take a 1v1, take an isolated 1v1 with your silver. Yeah. So whenever possible, you want to think about opportunities to abuse the enemy team for having smokes like this. You don't necessarily have to do it every single round because at a certain point they're going to start to expect it, but throwing in here and there will start to make them question whether the smokes are actually effective or not. Yeah. So instead, you, you seem like you decide to rotate to CT spawn again, which is like extremely safe. But consider the alternative where you play aggressive, especially your team has triple duelists. Your team is not really a, a defensive comp in the first place. Your team is like a very aggressive, very aggressive comp. I think I do tend to play. Um, I don't have a lot of hours on Phoenix, to be honest. I think I have like 14 or something, 10 or something, but only like 20 matches. Um, but I tend to play him defensively, more than offensively. Okay. Mm. Okay, well, let's see how this one plays out. <laughs> AKA Andy Boy. So here, we give up the opportunity to flash, pop flash of the smoke. Our jet is now actually pushing out the smoke with her op, so she I would expect it to be in, in some danger pretty soon. 
She has to bring her yeah, dash to get nice. out. This is so nice. What, what does and then we wide, we wide, super wide yeah, swing this nice. bim. This... We know the bim this is so bottom. Nice. We don't have to nice. pick this wide where we're also exposed to more and more mm -hmm. of the left side. If your job is yeah, just is to pick nice? bottom mid this... of the right side of mid, then this is all you need to pick. Yeah. To help isolate your only ones. We know that there's people mid. We don't know how many, we just know that at least one, there's at least brim. But there could be two, there could be three, who knows. So when we swing out this wide, we could very well be swinging into two, three people. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, another thing. Oh, hmm. Try to isolate on ones. Generally try to... Avoid wide wings or wide peaks. What does this mean for professional? Are there like <laughs> are there like therapy <laughs> sessions for test taking? Or? So that's kind of did I have like really bad anxiety when I take tests? Like as it's not like the anxiety. Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Uh, I want to wait for backup right now. Okay. Uh, Ren is going to flank. Uh, Spike just planted, so we have like forty seconds. So, okay. What else? Um. Well, not much to be honest. Uh, Raina does have ults. Yeah. So that's kind of scary. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much about it. So you have to write it down. You want to wait until Raina gets to us. The only issue is that because Raina is taking a super long rotation for something, like she's rotating through T spawn, so to, you know, going through T spawn for some reason, that. By the time that she is in garage, then the bomb will only have like, I don't know, 15 seconds left. Yeah. So, you have to find the middle ground between completely waiting for your team, and, but also trying to fight a tiny bit. You don't necessarily have to like, wide swing and then force engagements, force the one to happen, but you do want to like, poke around a bit to gain information about where is the enemy hiding? Are they switch? Are they in garage? Are they lane? Are they... On site, if so, try to get, how many, how many people try to get info without taking too many one of runs. Yeah, try to yeah. get info safely. Whether that's not by forcing one ones, that whether that's by jiggle peeking or putting utility, like peeking off a flash or something like that. But, but overall, the goal, the, what you should be thinking about is how do I gain information safely? Mm -hmm. And then the follow up to that. If it's even if it's possible, how can I take some at least some map control? Or take like imagine if I play with my jet and take control of outside of B sites. So so therefore like when my Raina comes, she only has to worry about garage and only has to worry about lane. Yeah. Hmm. And all those things are definitely accomplishable with just you and Jet and the 10 to 15 seconds that it's going to take for Reyna to take this super long rotation. So at least you can... Because we are triple, we are triple duelists, and yeah. we only have my flash at the current moment. Yeah, but you also, you don't want to be waiting too long, like, um, um, what's the word, like, getting no value for 10, 15 seconds until your team's mm -hmm. all together, then you can get value. Right now, you can still get some value, by playing with your jet, by gaining information, by finding out what enemies are, etc. Yeah. Well, right. Well, anxiety, it's actually like really bad. Careful now. Don't like this molly. What's the idea behind the molly? Um, I honestly don't know. That's I was. Right. Kind of thinking someone was there, but I realized not. Yeah, yeah. you basically cut off your, your jet's rotation. Then we kind of take this all we want. So it seemed like we, we semi waited. The wall is okay. The problem is we're not waiting for our jet, we're not waiting for our arena. So like we waited for a tiny bit, and now we're, now we're forcing one we ones again. Yeah. I hit the Yori 120. See what happens this go around. Then there's none, your team loses all the bombings. 
test. Never no, what a <laughs> You need a, a fucking calorie app to make sure that you eat. I mean, let's no go back to this actually test. because you actually do burn wall. That's true. One option is that you can pop flash off your wall to gain map control, like gain control of switch or gain yeah. control of part of garage, or like outside of B site basically by pop flashing. I'm not I'm not doing enough with my flashes, I can see that. Yeah, you basically die with both your flashes. Here you just drive peek back site, you lose the only one. I hit the Yori 120. And let's see what happens. So the garage is cleared. Back of uh, uh, Outside of B is clear, so there's actually two people lane, and then two people back sides. So, one option here. Uh, actually, let's go to the map. So, instead of taking the 1v1 with Yuri, I should have just confirmed his position. And wait for my jet. I was so let's talk about this. So we put a wall like this, and then eventually we drop down to here. Jet is still CT spawn. What I would actually do, and Reyna is Reyna is like B lobby uh, or something. What I would actually do is that I would leave this long sight line to our jet because our jet has an operator. She can win any any of these fights very easily. Yeah. So what I would do is that. I would pop flash through this wall, like a pop flash here, I can pop flash here, I can pop flash here. There's so many options that it's really difficult for an enemy to, if, if someone is hiding here, if someone's hiding here, here, whatever, or in garage, like it's gonna be very difficult for all of them, all these angles to, to like turn around from a properly timed pop flash, especially when there's so many angles that the pop flash can come from. Yeah. So after you do the pop flash, then you push through the smoke, and you clear all of outside of sight. And then you can also clear, mm. to some extent, this part of the garage. And then as Reyna pushes in, she becomes a lot more safe. Or she feels a lot safer because now, like, like half of garage is already cleared, and then she just have to worry about that, to some extent. Mm. Right, so now, when she gets to... so. After you do your pop flash, you push out through the smoke, then you get to here. And now goal is to play from Reyna. When Reyna is coming from garage, most likely she's going to take the fastest route, which is lane. So as soon as Reyna, let's say she gets to here, now we spend our second pop flash, flash this. And now you swing out, like Reyna swings out, and you swing out. It becomes a 2v1, an one at lane, or two in this, this example, it was actually a 2v2. And they're already committed, so if I flash that. Yeah, so you'll pop flash both of them. Pop flash both of them, take a 2v2, very easy to win. Kill these two mm. people, now it becomes a 3v2. Jet will probably kill a Euro, now it's a 3v1, now it's super winnable. So yeah. always think about how can I retake with my team as a team? What can I do to help my team like get to site? Like here, like for example, you can. Help you right now feel safe. Like as long as she clears this and then like this part of B main, the rest is already clear because of your wall plus pop flash. So that mm. she doesn't have to spend time. Oh, I need to check this, I need to check this, I need to check that, I need to check that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Back to VLC. Whatever. You eat properly. <laughs> Plus oh, yeah. tracking your carbs. Okay, the boom has burned two smokes. Oh, so is peeking garage, and we're not there to help him. <laughs> we're too concerned about breaking this door. So we could have died already. I can't believe you're actually gonna okay. write it down. <laughs> Joking. If I was there, I would have. If you were there, you would have killed the killjoy. I'll pop flash again. Time off you I would give this up. I would give this up. Actually, this like some mm. first, pop, first pop flash. Great. Get a kill off of it. Second one. Also great. It's a little bit late, but it's okay. But at this point, the the killjoy is safe. Unless you like spam it through the box, 
But even then, you see a person to your left, you're not really going to be able to finish this kill without you yourself dying. Mm. So at this point... I've really, I kind of feel like I've already committed too far. I'm already like halfway through the door, more than halfway through the door. The thing is that if you retreat, you take the 1-1 one -one with the Sage, and then if you win the 1-1, one -one, great, you survive, to live another day. If you continue pushing to your left here, now you're giving the enemy an opportunity to take a 1v2, uh, or 2v1. Yeah. And like, there's no way you're going to win that, unless the enemy team just like whiffs completely. What do you mean? So now we're like, we hard commit to this, but we didn't really have to. Rest, rest. Now we know all three, all three are here, all four actually. So we played way too committed when we didn't have to. You and your team set up a perfect container ready. Yvanna's pushing again, she keeps winning one ones awesome. My jet's pushing as well. A couple seconds later, you, now your team has mid control. Yvanna and jet have full mid control. And pretty soon they're gonna they're gonna keep the enemy contained in garage or in B lobby. But the problem is that you're way too committed inside garage. Nobody can help you. Your only like way to win this situation right now is if you one tap everything. Mm. And even then, you could one tap one person, but the other person is gonna kill one tap you as well. One tap you back. I think um biggest like what's the word um habits I have is to have the mindset of a solo queue player because I'm I used to mostly solo queue. I've only recently found a duo partner who I consistently play with. Okay, but I'm a solo queue player as well. And I tend to like not communicate that much with my team or play around them. I think, I think that's um, it's more more than just communication. Like I think some of this comes down to like awareness. But like if you saw mm -hmm. that your arena and jet were in mid then you should realize that you don't need to take a risk right now because your team has so much map control the only way that you're going to lose this round is if you get super hard outplayed like they just like super one tap everything or is if you like you make risky aggressive plays like this and kind of throw your life away yeah hmm oh yeah okay Rest. So, basically after we die, now it's a 3v4, now your Sage is alone, and now this container is much weaker. Much, much weaker. Actually, this Sage had an up with him. So now, like, your Sage is alone, your Jet is alone. And if the enemy team plays correctly, because it's 4v2, you just play Nemu's game, they can go anywhere they want, as long as they trade each other out correctly. Yeah. So now, yeah, now your team has lost pick control. They just give up garage. There's no point in them going garage anymore. Like, yeah, whatever. Or they can commit if they wanted to. This guy get fucking blinded and flash. I'm fucking demolished, and he's just. But, yeah, this round would be a lot more winnable if you just waited for your team or if you played around your team. Just keep the contain active. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um. What it, just put a random fucking in. Is that I think this this is how I personally play around the one yeah. maps quite a lot. Say again? I tend to play around the Utah and certain maps a lot. Like um I I do play a lot of Euro and on Bind especially. I try to use my footsteps a lot on through the TPs. Okay. Hmm. Even though sometimes it's not really useful to do some of these, most of these things. To to do what? What do you mean? Like um, to like let's say throw footsteps to TP to break doors to open in doors. Okay, that so type you, of thing. So you're talking about this door? You're saying this breaking oh, this, yeah. this door is not useful. Hmm. At the current moment, because we don't really know what they're committing to. Eh? Mm, I guess so. We got everything done. Cause one did yeah. die mid. The thing is, you, you, are the person in mid is too far away. Well, like even if we weren't breaking the story, like you can help the jet, anyways. And based yeah. on your your Reyna, your Reyna just killed someone in the uh, outside of a lobby. 
like slash aim in, right? The chances of the enemy like pushing you while you're breaking this door is pretty slim. So you do have time to break the door safely if that's what you're you're asking. And there's not much other play that you can do except you know run around the map with, sure a gun, with a ghost. Let's talk about that because uh, your team oh, has like, some random buys here. I don't think I checked out this round. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't check that this round, I think. Yeah, you want to press tab as much as possible because that's going to dictate how you play. Yeah. Uh, so Jay has a Deagle, so has a Marshall. Have, uh, we saw that Reyna had a Phantom. I'm not sure what Sage has. Just... We haven't looked at our Sage yet. I mean, honestly, um... Okay, I'm just going to assume that she doesn't have anything. But uh, Reyna definitely has a gun, so... I think she has a Marshall since he's playing, um... Rafters. Okay. Have mm. Okay. But specifically on, on the Reyna, because we know that she has the big gun, we want to play around or clo play close to Arena as much as possible. Yeah. So that if Arena dies, we can immediately pick up the gun as fast as possible. Yeah. Or alternatively, mm. whenever she gets a kill, if she kills someone, then try to coordinate with her or try to help her continue controlling that part of the map. So here, for example, she peeks into, into a main, she gets the kill, then try to work with her to get control of that like that part of the like where the body is, so that you can pick up Yoru's gun. Yeah. Mm. So, so we could have taken more map control by taking that um hallway. I could have gotten a uh, gun somewhat. Well, not specifically map control, but you're fighting for gun control. Mm. So that you want to get guns for yourself and get guns for your team. Because your team is on yeah. eco right now. So, okay. so you only, you're only going to be able to make these types of plays if you recognize what's happening. So if you recognize that Reyna has a gun because you press tab, or you recognize on the minimap that Reyna has a gun and she is aggressively peeking into a lobby. So I should run over there and help her as fast as possible. Whether she dies or doesn't die, doesn't matter. I want to be there to be like, to be like, uh, to follow up on whatever happens. Mm. Okay, any questions so far? Um, not really. Okay. Okay, we're just kind of breaking the door. Yeah, now we don't have much else to do. We know that someone's a lobby. He just got the orb. God, this looks terrible. Shut the fuck up. You look terrible. Good pop flash. We found the nobody's mids. Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Uh, kind of want to create space for my radar and my sage since they're both stuck on rafters. So I want to let them take better positions. What do you mean by stuck on rafters? Well, um, if people are pe if people peek them while they're trying to change positions, then they can get kind of punished for that. But the rain does have a flash up. Okay, mm. so where do you want them to position? Um, I would want to play closer to them since I am stuck on the rides. I mean, mm. you said they're stuck on rafters. Where do you want them to go? Uh. Probably down the side so they can play a bit of a closer angle. The rain especially, preferably. But you know, I can, we can kind of play off each other. Well, is the closer angle better or worse than where they are currently? Mm. I don't really know. So, I would say that your Sage and Rena are already in really good positions. I mean, maybe ideally they shouldn't wide swing that far. But maybe it's okay because Reyna has her flash outs. But because your Sage has a Marshall, because your Reyna has a Phantom, versus uh, I'm assuming the enemy team I don't know, has a half fire or whatever, but her being on, on like your Reyna being on, on Heaven is not necessarily bad either because it's your, if your team, like if she dies, your team loses control of A. When your team goes to retake, most likely you can like pick up her gun from Heaven as opposed to if she died on site. Yeah. So it's not necessarily bad, 
But the Sage, I would definitely keep her on, on Raffius. I want to definitely keep her as far away as possible to abuse her long range advantage with the Marshal. Yeah. Okay. So here it looks like we want to rotate over. Personally, I think the the better play is to play with our Silver. Our Silver looks like he's want he wants to help uh, take mid control, and because you pop flash, you, because you saw nobody already, you can actually play off that a bit, and then maybe you hide somewhere in mid, hide in some corner, and then like cut off enemy rotations. If I do remember, I do think I do push mid next. Okay. Mm. The alternative thing is that. Because your Sage and Reyna are like wide swung and peaking a main, then there's not really much of a point to, to wall. I mean, I guess because you said your your intention is to get them to rotate, but they're kind of already in good positions. What I would do instead is that I would hug close to the A main like corner, like around here, and then wait for them to make contact, then I'll swing out. Yeah. Okay, so let's see how you play this. Oh, yeah. You should pop the eyeball as fast as possible. This seems very committed. I would give up this fight. You get the kill, but it seems like you only deserve that. Let's see. Yeah, let's, let's slow this down a little bit. You saw the eyeball. As soon as I see this ult, as soon as I see this ult, I like. To me, this is a committed A hit. Because yeah. the enemy team is spending such an expensive ult, we're investing in such an expensive ult, that it's a very high chance that they're going to push A right now. Therefore, I yeah. need to like help my team right now. Yeah. Look how nice this one so we continue pushing out mids. We happen to win the one against Killjoy, but that, that's not always really reliable. Like at a certain point, the enemy team is not going to be oh, bad at aiming. This looks so. awesome. Okay, let's pause here. What are you thinking? Ah, uh, she has an op. I can probably push her. If she misses her shot, she's basically dead. Okay. What else are you thinking? Where's that it? Uh, uh, Rain is probably close on... What do you call it? Uh, that little hallway. Right in where the sage is peeking around. She's probably somewhere in that hallway, a little bit down further. So, somewhere so in lobby, somewhere the sage, I can take the one down. Somewhere next to Sage, I guess? Yeah, a little bit further to the right. Okay, let's mm. see if we actually... Well, we did see the eyeball. So we know that Reyna is a main. A main, yeah. Somewhere in a main, that's what I meant. We kill the killjoy. <laughs> we see the Brim is also a main. Brim dies. Oh my God. So at this point, Reyna is either still a main or possibly a lobby. Oh, now we're here, we decide to heal. Awesome. And we're saying that we want to bait the op shot from Sage and then push her. Okay, then let me ask you, how do you plan to bait that op shot? Um... Just... I mean... Don't really have a plan on how to, but I'm gonna... I want to use my ult here. And if she hits me, I'll just fall back. Okay, so I would say that uh, generally when you want to bait, to do the way to bait up shots is to jiggle peek, or yeah. like or shoulder peek, where like you show your shoulder a tiny bit, or if you want to be a little bit more riskier, you you jiggle peek, where you expose your body and you actually visibly see the sage, then you went back to cover to to try to bait the shots. Alternatively, you can also jump peek. Yeah, jump peek. And I've been trying to learn that. It's a bit... Uh, not really my main focus right now. So these, but, uh, are ways to, so these are ways to bait an op shot. And you're right that she's a lot more vulnerable after she misses the shot. But let's present a hypothetical scenario. If she plays correctly. Well, I guess if she plays... I would expect you to play. You are here. Sage is here. She's aimed down at you because she knows where you are. And then this would be the corner that you would have to do your your peeking off of. And then let's say you you jiggle this. You go here and you mm. go back. And then Sage takes the shot. Right? And this hypothetical snow, you bait the shot successfully, 
problem is that the distance between you and the sage is very large. And mm. if she plays it correctly, she'll only expose like just this tiny sliver of herself. As soon as she takes a shot, she backs out. And then yeah. meanwhile, if you want to push her, you have to push through mid catwalk. You're probably going to get to like here before her shot is back. And now she can peek you again if she wanted to. And now you're, yeah. you're hundred percent exposed. Mm. Right. Okay. So if now we know that if she plays it correctly, banging the off shot doesn't really accomplish anything. It would just yeah. give her an opportunity to kill us or give her an opportunity to waste our ult. Yeah. Okay. So we know that Serena was, okay, let's say she's somewhere here between A main and A lobby. We know that our Sage is Heaven and our Reyna is uh, somewhere in sight, whatever. Yeah. And this is it. We, this is, we know that the enemy is contained and so it's yep. it's not the best idea i have it's not the best play but i have somewhat i might i do have somewhat of a good position right because i'm holding mid control yes you're okay. in a good position right now good position bad play you're in a yeah. very strong position because you completely cut off the mid rotation yeah and i can always fall back to mid link and be lobby yeah. Yeah. So this seems to go back to a similar trend that you have the enemy contained. You don't have to do anything except wait for them to come to you. Eventually, the sage has to push mid. When she gets to like this spot, now she's like exposed. She has to like play this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. Someone could be here and like timing her. Someone could be here and timing her. And she has to clear this angle, all this sightline through B lobby, parts of mid link, and as well as, well as where you're standing, right? There's so many angles that, you, that they're exposed to if they were to decide to push through mid. That most yeah. likely you're going to kill one and then be able to retreat very easily. Yeah. The alternative is that because they're contained, the only other option is to run to your, into your team, run into your team's uh, 2v1 crossfire or mm. they burn like 30 seconds to walk not even be able to run because based on where you are if they were to run you would actually hear them they would have to walk through t-spawn waste at least 30 seconds before they actually can be threatening a b push from b lobby yeah because i think um full sprint it's about from where the rain is, I think it's about like 25 seconds to plant on B, or 30. Yeah, if they fall split, you'll hear them. Like hmm. And then, they really don't know yeah. time. they fall sprint, you hear them, you tell your teammates, hey, the T-spawn, they're going B. Then your Reyna, your, your Sage, can immediately just fall off. They'll fall, rotate to CT, this guy can fall off, rotate to mid. Yeah. And then basically set up the exact same thing. Your Sage ends up in CT spawn. Urena ends up in market. You will uh, sit in like mid link. Let's say they eventually they go to be lobby. You continue hearing them. You hear them stomping in, in garage. Now the exact same setup. They're in a possible 2v1 crossfire. And then you're still cutting off their rotation. And you also have the potential to just like walk behind them and flank. Yeah, so it's kind of patience, I guess. Yeah. So basically, yeah. like, keep the enemy contained. Keep control of the map. Don't give up control of the map. Eventually, you're just kind of automatically going to win the round. Yeah. Okay, so. Back to VLC. How does it look wholesome? It's just... Words. Here we bring the ults. Nice. We get the kill, which is nice. Although Reyna could have killed us and then actually healed off our body. That sage has no idea what's going on. So you win the round just because like your aim is really good for your rank and because your enemies are really dumb. Yeah.
This puts the most editing on it for your So, uh, the play, so it's a, it's, it's a bad habit that I, if I'm thinking that play is good, that's a bad habit. Because it works only because my enemies are kind of dumb. Yeah, you, all, you have to question everything that you do. Even if it works, like, there's probably something you still probably could have done better. Yeah. Like, let me put it this way, like, every time that I take an engagement, if to me it feels like a 50-50, well, like, I could win it or the enemy could win it. And I have to consider, like, is this 50-50 worth gambling? Like, basically a coin flip, right? Is it worth coin flipping right now? Yeah. So in that situation, because your team is up 3-2, because you have the, the enemy contained, you actually have more to lose if you were to lose the fight, like lose the 1v1, compared to what you would gain by winning the 1v1. Mm. So I would think about it this that way, about like, think about every fight as a 50-50, I mean, most of the fights you're winning just because you have good aim, but you can't always rely on that. Think of it more instead of a, as a coin flip. And then you can ask yourself, is this coin flip worth taking? So my biggest mistake right now is just game sense. Right? That's the biggest thing I need to work on. It's just game sense. Yeah, I think so. Kind of sense him. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ability, the priority... I lost the 1v1, bruh. I'm kinda sad. Two items, yeah, we have two items, right? Okay, so we just lost the 1v1. Again, my ones that you don't have to take. As soon as you saw the pussy. I probably should have just pushed back to market to help my server. You saw your OTP, well, not TP, but alt. You see the brim. Here, I would just, I would just like disengage. After you take like a couple shots, you just back out. Instead, you just stay there, continue shooting. Yeah. And now your team has semi lost mid control. I mean, your jet is still or it was. Because if I did push that server, the server would have. Uh, I could have helped him with the one v one. Yeah, you could have helped your server, which would be like guaranteed value compared to forcing a one v one against top mid by yourself. Yeah. Alternatively, mm. based on where your jet is playing, your jet is like semi watching tiles or peeking to tiles to some extent that you can just uh wait for her to make contact before you swing out and peek mid yeah so again thinking about angles thinking about the intersection point of, of multiple angles where those intersection points happen is where you want engagements to happen because you're forcing two or three people versus one person yeah so it's just also it's also awareness of your teammates' positions. Yeah. He's only gay now. He's gone full gay. He's gone full dick power only. Yeah. What is this balloons gameplay? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gaming, man. It's really good. You should first tab to see what your team has. You could have bought for somebody, like somebody has a spectre, you could have just bought him a spectre, or you can buy a pistol or something. Shut the fuck up. Should communicate, smoke speed. Again, voicing one ones you don't have to. All the time. Yeah. Okay, name one bad show. It's incredible. Yeah. Like playing Cookie Flicker, you know? Do you want to watch him? So every round I peaked mid. For no reason, I lost the one when we lost. YouTube thumbnails on Pornhub now. Yep. There was like a surprise phase in a thumbnail. Hmm. So there seems to be a trend here. You win if your gamble pays off, you lose if your gamble doesn't pay off. I lost thumbnails on Pornhub now. There was like a surprise phase in a thumbnail. Hmm. Here your team is like really scared for some reason. I think it's because you don't have a flash. There was like a surprise phase in a thumbnail. Hmm. Here I was just like, I was just entry or let's see, does your server actually have any utility? Does he, does he die? Does he do anything? Yeah, he has a ghost, so he doesn't have a drone. So we should at least have a dart. I said you guys are just you're just sitting A main. And now, now this looks good. Now the, now the the entry is over, or the execute is over. Mm. So you as a duelist, you need to come up with a plan to like, how are we going to get my team onto site? Instead of just like, yeah. sitting A main, trying to do it. 
Yep. My plan here was to just wall off the middle of it. Because cause I'm, I, it's kind of like a habit of mine to just use wall like that, for, especially for Phoenix, because I used, to, I used to play a lot of Viper. Okay. And um, I tend to use it somewhat like that, somewhat like a Viper wall. Okay. So I, I try to get in space with it like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. So you can wall off left side, like wall off the door, all the way up to generator, and then you just worry about the other half of the site. That's a good idea. Yeah. But what I would like to do is, like, see what happens, like, you start to prepare your wall. And then also ask your solver for a dart. Dart somewhere on site, whatever, and then most likely the dart would have, would have spotted the killjoy for you. What if we watch two girls on Have you But because our XQ was, like, really slow, now, now we're just, like, trapped behind the smoke. Yeah. And then your team finally manages to force their way brute force their way at the site, basically. I would just I would have just like rotated around. Mm, they're both one HP now. Over here, traps. As soon as you died, I would just like this this push is over. We don't have any more flashes to put flashes out of the smoke. Unless we like hurry up play the enemy, this execute is over. But I think uh, they they committed because the server darted you. So they try to use that information. Even then, there's no point because Reyna has secured so much map control for us that we can just run through mid right now, we can run to B, and then we're most likely going to take B for free. Yeah. Right, okay. So eventually it? here, Reyna is like, continue pushing, continue pushing, she's getting more and more and more and more map control. Now we have control of pizza, we have control of market, Shit. pretty soon we're going to have control of CT spawn. No. No. <laughs> so now, actually, yeah, now actually, one play we can make is just to sit in A main and continue baiting attention. Baiting attention to have the enemy like look at us A main so that Mana can continue looking, 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 flanking, flanking, flanking. Jordan, have you watched him? No, I, well, I would yeah. never. But your team needs to be ready to execute as soon as Mana makes contact. Yeah. Here your team is like, it's too far away from your main, it seems like they've already got to decide to rotate out. But now Reyna gets a kill. Once she gets a kill, her, her position is compromised, they know where she is. And that's when your team needs to like, execute. But instead she, she loses the next one, she gets traded out. Now your team executes, but it's a little bit late, because now the enemy Reyna has, has time to like reload, heal. And now she's gonna pick out a heaven if I were expected to pick out a heaven within the next couple of seconds. Right now, yeah. Oh, let's kill Joy. So, not an issue of you specifically, but like your teams can do things better. Yeah, I mean, I think you're doing my rank, it's, it's silver too, so. Okay, let's actually do the not the, not the best gameplay. <laughs> Okay. Let's do head tails and whoever loses. What even is that? I kind of been, I've kind of been climbing so much. Yeah, oh, I feel like you've been climbing a lot because your aim, your aim is really good for a solo too. Let's go on life league and watch people die. I kind of feel like I lose a lot of one rounds though. No. I would buy you slowly though, even though like you're, you're saving for next, like having two flashes or at least one flash, like makes this round, like, improves your chances of stealing a gun, at least. And also greatly improves your chances of even winning the round. Whereas, like, you just run out with a ghost, and then all you have is a wall and molly, and it's, like, very little to work with. Yeah. Hmm. Here, I say sh I should speak. Okay, she's just shooting a wall. Okay. Does life leak still exist? She's shooting wall, shooting wall. Andreas. I kinda wanna peek in the Whenever you encounter a sage wall, you have, uh, well, I would say that generally you should break the wall as soon as possible because it, the longer that the wall stays up, the more and more value the wall is going to get. So they're walling yeah. a main, and then for the 45 seconds or whatever that it lasts, they do not have to look at a main at all. Unless maybe if you guys have like a jet or something, you can like 
so you can like updraft over it or whatever but like your team doesn't have any of that so they can just like leave a, a main alone completely and spend their resources spend their manpower spend their utility on other places on the map like cat like mid etc so that's why sage is the most picked well nearly the most picked and overpowered agent sage is the most overpowered agent why um well, it's better to turn ties, I would say. You, have a, you can make a 4v5 into a 5v5. So if one person makes a mistake, uh, it's fine. And uh, heal. It's also slow orbs and walls, the nice scenarios. Wait, make it but I, I would still say that... Uh, hmm, I, either Ashra or Jed is probably the best agent, in my opinion. Okay, well, I'm not going to get too much about into tier list. I'll just say that your agent choice doesn't make a huge difference, especially at low elo, or whatever elo, that it's more important that, that you're, you're using your agent to the, the best of the agent's ability, or the, the max, getting the max value out of your agent, rather than when yeah. you're picking, like, oh, and picking the best agent in the game. I mean, I did, um, I did play Yoru for a while, I kind of stopped recently because <clears throat> after 100 matches, my win rate is 45% with Euro. Okay, so maybe you need to post a lot of you playing Euro. <laughs> it could be yeah. like the, the play style you're playing is too risky, or you're not getting enough value, or you're not using utility correctly, etc. Not necessarily that Euro is bad, therefore your win rate is 45%, but chances are you're just not playing him to his max potential. Yeah, that's fair. I also kind of struggle with a lot with uh, tech because if you've seen, my ping is 178 on average. Oh, okay. That's because of where I'm from, though. Although it doesn't, it's not as bad as it looks, to be honest. Okay. Not as bad as it sounds. I don't know, I played mm -hmm. on a Southeast Asia account before and I had like 110, 120 ping, and it was like really hard. I had to like completely change my playstyle to like never play a common angle, never play a, a uh, like a direct angle, just abuse off angles as much as possible. Yeah. So that's that is it is what it is. Okay. Well, anyway, so back to this. So your sage here. Oops. Yep. Yeah. didn't screw it up. Okay. You see here, you see the wall, that's why she's shooting at it. So whenever you see a sage wall, you should break the wall as soon as possible. Then you can go with whatever your 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 previous thinking was. Where like here, you're thinking, I'm just gonna rotate out because the sage wall is blocking me. Well, you can also break the wall and then rotate out. And by breaking the wall, you put pressure on the enemy sage, you put pressure on the enemy team, and you force them to keep somebody watching A main. As opposed to, if you don't break the wall, the wall is up, they don't have to worry about aiming at all until the wall is broken. Yeah. Okay. Let's go B. So, we will take out. Arena is already finding one one. Let's pause here, we look at mid, we decide not to go mid. Let's pause here, what are you thinking? Um, I want to go to my arena, honestly, because okay. she has somewhat of an entry there on B. Okay. Yeah. What else? And my team is already kind of following me. So if I, if I don't commit to this, then we're just mindlessly walking around uh, A lobby. Okay. What else? Uh, not much. Other than the fact that someone is mid. Okay, you could have rotated yeah. mid here, yeah. but you choose not to. Why not? Uh, well, didn't really see where anyone is, so I have didn't really look at the map when the guy died, so I didn't know really where he is. So I'd have to check every single angle in mid. Okay, so it seems like you kind of automatically made the right decision, even though we didn't really think about it. 
So yeah, the the right decision is to let you to see this one, but it's because the euro has as a scout or like some long range weapon, and your team only has pistols. Okay. So that yeah, what you do is I tend, to, I tend to subconsciously make decisions most of the time, which yeah. is kind of a bad habit. I try to I've been trying to think more and more in the games. Yeah, think more and more. Yeah. But if it was the other way around, like if you had guns, then I would actually rotate through mid because uh, you are with your Sage and your Sova. If you find yourself in a gunfight, you can very easily turn that into a 3v1 gunfight where yeah. it's not going to be a Ghost versus a Marshal anymore. That was going to be like a Phantom or Vandal versus a Marshal or Phantom or Vandal versus another Phantom or Vandal. And that becomes a lot more more winnable, and especially when you have your team with you, that you can like basically force your force fully take mid control. Mm. Okay, so we have the idea. We're gonna take to arena. We're gonna get that as fast as possible. Our Sova is hanging on top mid. Arena is is in tiles. We're a little bit behind Arena. We still want to get to as fast as possible. We white swing. We shouldn't do that. And then we crouch. We commit. Mm. As soon as you saw that, saw that, you should have just like ran back. So try to let your your teammates like make first contact instead of here. Here, you make first contact, and nobody's in yet in position to trade you out. Yeah. And okay, Reyna can trade you out to some extent. Oh, she dies. I should have waited like two seconds and walked it a bit. I would say just like not be too committed. Just try not to wide swing. We go new because the hot ones, you know. Wait, what? You know, I don't. I. So, what now? So, control your movement. Try not to accidentally wide swing. That's a great kill. Push your team. Careful about peeking this. This is the isolated by me one. Oh, I know what we do. Oh my gosh, here we double peek the sage. Oh, I know. That's one peek while I have utility outs. We do. Mm. Here's a second peek with utility outs. Hopefully this time you could have just immediately died. While this is all happening, our Sova and Jet are aggressively pushing out. When the team is aggressively pushing, you should push as well. Yeah. You want to help our team as fast as possible. Of what? Or his yes. Again, be careful about peaking markets. They you can accidentally find yourself in a one v one. This this is much better. So here, the difference between committed and uncommitted angles. This is a committed angle because if someone were to wide swing us from garage, we're committed to fighting that. We're too far away from cover to break line of sight. Hmm. Okay, now this is an uncommitted angle. You're still watching garage to some extent. If someone peeks garage, you'll see them, but you, you're you much closer to cover and you're much safer. You're using a lot, big part, part of this wall as cover. Yeah. So you can break a line of sight in like less than a second. So you're much less committed. Yeah, why are you using What is it called? Great. Love it. Love that Solo should not peek. Yeah, why are you using what is it called? No, okay. He should just hide in that corner. FBI gonna check up on so that you have an opportunity to bait him. Here you should play off your jet. Let's see what happens to your siege. Yeah, why are you using what is it called? No, okay. love names. Is the FBI gonna check up on Red Oak? Siege takes a one one, which is unfortunate. Here we wanna hop out jet. Hop out jet. One enemy remaining. Kill, just hide. Oh, oh, so in terms of positioning, you can accomplish the same kind of thing. Like here, you're watching, you're watching lane. I would play back sites so that it's much easier to isolate the like this one v one and protect ourselves from B stairs. Mm. So basically, you get this kill at lane, 
And now you, you can't peek over to B stairs, but again, this is another wide swing. Uh, the second yeah. I saw, I shouldn't have um, swung at all. I should have, shouldn't have committed. I should have just played, pushed back yeah. my jet. You should basically just like play slight, play the bomb, play around these boxes, and like waste as yeah. much of this Rain's attention, waste as much of her time as possible. That's like you got Ring of the Rose here yeah, on the Ring boxes. Yeah, Ring exactly. Because she's not going to be able to defuse the bomb until she kills you. So you, basically, you can win the round just by staying alive. Alternatively, because you have a, your jet is still alive, you can just like stay alive long enough so that the jet gets a good flank on her. Yeah. Because I don't think at the current moment she don't she knows where Jet is. Right. Nice, yeah, she doesn't know where the Jet is. Andrea's secret lovers. <laughs> but now this Vayne is not playing correctly. She should have just tapped the bomb immediately. She probably actually could have won the round if she just tapped did the exact same thing that she just did, but tapped it immediately. Perfect. But if she kills you, she can heal, dismiss, whatever. As soon as possible, she should just run to the bomb, tap it, and that puts pressure on the jet to show herself. Instead of here, she's like walking, 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 wasting time, time that she does not have. And then the jet actually makes the first move, which she doesn't even have to because the Vena has to tap the bomb first. So imagine if Vena did all that, but faster, then she would have won the round. And then he doesn't capitalize mm. mine. You don't capitalize sure. mine. Oh. Top of the river. I'm looking away, I'm looking away. Okay, okay so here I'm I would away. actually... Um, because you have... Well, let me ask you, what's your plan for this round? Um... There's no real plan right now, honestly. I haven't communicated... We haven't communicated with each other at all right now. Okay. I just want to see what my team is doing at the current moment. And I just want to play off what they're doing. Okay. Especially since uh, I've been given Spike, so... Okay, so I would say... Generally, when you have ult, I would look to make a play of the ult. And second thing is that when you have ult and not full utility, is that I would forego shields in favor of more utility. Because yeah. when you ult, you get your health back. Yeah. So having that utility is, is more useful, more important than having shields, which is not going to come back. Mm. I'm making okay. see. Are you watching? As soon Another as I white don't swing. See a cheesecake, I'm looking away. Ah! We're really far away to do this ult. We want to get close to, like, you want to ult, like, right here. So that you maximize the time of your ult. Yeah. And then we actually didn't even check that there's a wall here, so now we have to waste some time. What, what did you see? And now our ult only has, like, 2-3 seconds left. And yeah, we were not able to clear the entire site. There could be somebody in hell right now. It could be somebody on the other side of this generator. We actually didn't clear it yet. So we use the close the door switch. There it is. Okay, so we just watch him flank. Now we know there's two in heaven. Yeah, we we can actually abuse this this stage wall right here. So, how was it? I don't know where the broom is. Okay, I'll pass you. Hmm? What'd you say? I don't know where the broom is at all. That's okay. Thing. So I would say that you're too overly focused about the flank. The flank might happen, but also might not happen. But what will definitely happen is that people are going to push your silver. So you need to be available for what's, a, what's definitely going to happen, which is like helping your silver, right? They're going yeah. to peek from heaven or they might peek from door. Well, at least one person is going to peek from heaven or peek from door, and then your soul is, is definitely going to find himself in a gunfight. And then when that happens, so, yeah. The success rate of me actually finding someone in flank and killing them is way lower than the success rate of me playing a 2v1 
Kia. I'm possibly going to kill. I'd say, don't think about the success rate. Think about what is guaranteed to happen. Mm. Not not about like whether you kill the flanker or not or whatever. What is guaranteed to happen is that someone was already spotted on heaven. Then that person is going to fight your Sova. Yeah. And we don't know yet if someone is actually flankering or not. There you go. So again, we want to play with our teammates. So, Here we're a bit split. Yeah, I, I mean, watching the flank makes sense. Just be careful that your silver could get pushed. Either 1v1 or even worse, a 1v2. And then after he dies, now we'll be stuck in a 1v2 situation. Okay, this peak is too early. This peak is too early. We want to wait until Silva makes first contact based on the angle because like here, we're taking a 1v1 with the brim, but Silva does not have an angle on the brim. Not yet. Not until brim goes further along, along heaven or until brim drops down from heaven. Then he can be within Silva's line of sight. Yeah. So yeah, we basically lose this by giving them a 1v1, followed by another 1v1. So, one way to play this, let's see, Sova is basically in the corners. Okay, so let's go to the map. Okay, we are in the sites. Sova is here. Somebody is heaven. We'll say it's Brim. Killjoy is unknown. And we are, for now, we're in a main. <laughs> I think we do know where Kildra is. I think she's behind the box on the rise of rafters. Because the, 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 yeah, she's right there. Yeah, you're right. Oh no, that's Sage, that's Sage, never mind. I actually don't know where she is. So, Kildra was, was last seen somewhere in window. Kildra is somewhere here. The brim is unknown. So, we know that at least Kildra is either going to push from heaven or going to push from door. Yeah. Okay. So what we want to avoid happening is this being a mummy one that you take while Silva is still waiting in this corner here, still waiting while he has only has this angle. So this is the intersection point. This is not the intersection point. Mm. So I should have waited until Silva made first contact. Yes. So another the thing. That, yeah. uh, see someone, I should peek. Say again? The second I see Sova sees someone or shoots, or as, someone shoots on the map. As, as soon as Sova makes contact. It doesn't necessarily mm. mean that they're shooting, although that is usually the most common indicator. Yeah. Okay, so another way to think about this is that while Sova is holding this angle, and then the person who drops from heaven will drop into his line of sight, and the person from heaven has to clear this part of hell, this, like all of hell, basically, followed by generator where Sova is. Yeah. And then, to some extent, a little bit of door, but them dropping down, they're exposed to a lot of angles. So, in that scenario, as long as Sova plays it correctly, I would actually expect him to at least survive a decent bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, then the other thing is that the Sova, while he's watching this, he's fully exposed to door. Someone can come from door and then kill the Sova. Mm. So, one way to try to prevent this is if we hold the angle like this and we watch like, like this to some extent. Yeah. I also had wall, I think. So I could have kind of taken that. Yes, we do have wall. You can also make a play of wall. I can kind of take some more space on sites, maybe just run all the way under to the hill. You also have Molly, which can help you buy a few seconds to help you isolate all of one for a few uh, seconds. If I throw it on heaven, then that kind of stops his push for like one second, unless he wants to take some damage. Hmm. So yeah, you do have a lot of options. You could, for example, Molly heaven, then You'll, let's say you, you push out of a main, you tell your solo, hey, let's push the door, it's 2v1 this guy, whatever. And now you now you and your solo have more map control. Like you say, you have control of a link, or you have control of tree. Now you have the opportunity where someone can flank from heaven. 
So you yeah. end up getting more, more opportunities and more options. But even if you didn't make that play, this would be where I would hold. I would hold this way so that if someone were to come out of door and then peek the Sova, then they run into your line of sight. But you can still play off your Sova. So if the person, if they go heaven, they drop down, they drop down to Sova's line of sight, they fight this 1v1, now you swing out from main main, and now you force this to become a 2v1. Yeah. Mm. So always think about how do I avoid like unnecessary one v ones, unless I'm like really confident I can I can just like win every single one v one, and how do I force two v ones to happen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so back to VLC. So you realize that we lost this because we peaked a heaven so, too early. Yeah, how was we, it? we peaked, we took a 1v1, we happened to lose it, and then now Sova finds himself in another 1v1. Actually, he finds himself being flanked by the killjoy. Okay, okay, roll it again, roll it again. Yeah. There's a save round. I thought that would be like yeah, a guy who would fall into this. <laughs> here, Arena's running ahead. She could potentially take an engagement while we're just sitting here, okay. way in the back, being really passive. Also, I this drone is going like out. Guy. You or Arena or both should play off of this drone. One of the areas this drone clears, like this drone just cleared garage for us. We should just, there's no point in just us sitting in the garage. We should do something. We, should, we can grab the orb if we wanted to. We can run off a knife out if we wanted to. Yeah. Right now it peaks lane. It sees nobody's lane. It peaks uh, CT spawn. Okay. There's nobody to spawn except this turret. Let's see, did it peak? Uh, mark it at all. Okay. A tiny bit, but not that much. Rail explodes. I'm and it drones at around 128. So now the drone's gone. I don't know why I'm pushing with the jab and ass like. Please, this is too slow. Well for for yeah, now, yeah. You, not just you, but also your whole team. Now your team is executing, but it's 10 seconds after the drone is already gone. Please, like yeah. here, the drone's already gone for 6 seconds. The enemy team could have like shifted positions already. Now someone could be CT spawn, somebody could be B stairs, somebody could be lane. And now like the XU, now it's happening, now the flash is coming out, almost 10 seconds later. So the team's executing slow, we're also not playing with our team. We didn't really play off the drone, that was the, the key thing from here. Not necessarily that you got flash, not necessarily that you find this euro. Whether you kill them or not, the, the other issues are a bigger priority. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh my god, man. That must be a disgusting. Also, I think another thing, too, is that I'll say that as Phoenix generally on Ascent attacked, your job is to farm the orbs as much as possible because of how farmable your ult is and how safe mm. it is to get orbs on attack. Yeah. And then every round that you have ult, you basically use your ult to aggressively take map control. So you can aggressively push out of B, take B site. You can aggressively push A main, take A site. You can aggressively push mid, take mid control. Without even counting any of the other sources, you can get uh, your ult every three rounds just from ult orbs. Yep, exactly. Mm. So Phoenix's ult is like the most farmable ult next to maybe Euro, because Euro is also a six. Six or old, but his ult is only so, for information. Yeah. Whereas, like, Phoenix ult allows you to swing with a teammate and, like, take map control or take a 2v1. Yeah. Which then kind of indirectly leads to map control. So, journey on ascent, that's what you want to be doing as Phoenix. You want to be abusing that. What the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, disgusting thing to witness in real life. Why would it be disgusting to witness in real life? See, do we look at the economy? What the fuck? 
That's my reaction. Oh my god, man. That was Okay. Okay, I can assume that the enemy team is gonna fall by. We have a rifle. We're one of two people who have rifles. I guess Mena is like a four spot rifle. Yeah, but Silver only has a, yeah. has a, a shorty. So again, going back, whenever we have a rifle, or even whenever where our team is is like is like um, half bot versus full bot, we want to uh, play off our big guns. Here you have the big gun, and then make sure that when you take an engagement, that you take it in such a way, like you position yourself in such a way that if you were to die, your team can still run over to your body and pick up a gun easily. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I hope Jordan gets one in the traumatizing one that'll traumatize him the, his whole life. Yeah, you guys. Okay. Like the chains all on. It's a good swing. Oh Skip it to you off. So yeah. Uh, no, you have to work on your headphones. Yeah, we'll pass on that. Yeah. Like the chains all on. Right after this flash, you hear a TP behind you to your left. Oh God, that is so I think that's the. I should have realized because I do play Yuri, I should realize that uh, sometimes the uh, flash on can mask the TP. Especially if you do get flash. You would say, I think you got like half flash, you get you full blinded. Because you didn't get full flashed, you actually were able to hear the TP sound. Oh, that you. is so horrible. No, not the spider. Oh, but I'm gonna spider. Think only if you want to stick. You jet wash path. Are you ready, Jordan? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Take flight. We would be careful about going along with the bomb. Very nice flash we went. No charges. <laughs> Be careful about why swinging this when your sage mm. is still 2-3 seconds behind you. You could get one tapped here, be dead, and drop the bomb. Now, the bomb would, could possibly be stuck in garage. Very nice yeah. Nice no charges left. Off. Yeah, really nice. I like Again, wide swing, wide swing. We didn't even look at B stairs at all. No Let's slow this down a bit. About all the angles that we okay. Actually, let's go to a map because we can point out which angles that we really need to check. Okay, so we're pushing B. We're in garage. We have to clear market. Then we have to clear this or, or whichever order. Then we clear this. Then we clear this. Then we clear this. Then we clear this on top of the box. Then we clear B stairs. Then we clear like uh, between here and switch. Then we clear. Actually, that's the extent. Maybe someone could be here, but it's less likely. Mm. But we can do all that by this angle, that angle. Let's say you're. Say you're like you from here, then from here, then from here. So you notice like where you're ending up is like isolated. Yeah. Here, then here, then here, then here, right? So this is one, this is two, three, four, five, six, seven slices of a pie. If you ever heard the term slicing the pie. Mm. So instead of wide swinging to here, and then you peak five angles at once, Instead, isolate them so you pick them one at a time. I mean, kind of makes sense. You can't eat five slices at the same time. You have to go one at a time. Yeah. The only time that you really want to be wide swinging like this into all these angles is when you have a teammate with you in garage. So if you're Phoenix here and your Sage is directly behind you, ready to swing at the same time, then yes, you can. Sw you are allowed to wide swing. And then your sage can pick normally, which ends up here, yeah. and then you wide swing to here. But in the scenario where you're alone, you want then generally you want to isolate one v ones and not accidentally put yourself in a one v two, one v three, whatever situation. Yeah. So, 
minor issue. Number two, try to practice slicing the pie. Or I guess that would be actually number three. One angle is on. Hmm. Okay, so back to video. So, this is the one angle that we're exposed to, right? And so, also, cross your placement. Think about the angles that you're going to expose yourself to and peek them one at a time with your crosshair placed on them. So, here we've already exposed ourselves to one angle, and our crosshair is not positioned there. Our crosshair is actually ready for market. Then we peak market, but our crosshair is a bit off because our crosshair is still on the wall instead of in market. Now we're peaking top stairs. We're exposed to top stairs of like the, I don't know, market, like market stairs, but we're not, our crosshair is still not where it should be. Yeah. It's still on the wall. And here, now we're peaking CT spawn again, you can see, but our crosshair is still not there. Now the crosshair is correctly placed where it should be when we're peaking the left side of CT spawn. Although technically we swung a little bit too far to to watch the to check the turret, like if someone could be on the turret spot instead of an actual turret. Mm. And now we're exposed to B stairs, and again our crosshair is is nowhere where it needs to be positioned, like nowhere near where it should be. <laughs> yeah. So each angle that you expose yourself to. Limit yourself to one angle at a time and keep your crosshair positioned where that angle is. So now you're exposed to the switch. Our crosshair is not even anywhere near the switch. Fortunately for you, none of that mattered. You just happened to get timinged. I will accidentally see some of these because of Here you just grab your ult and get the orb <laughs> and then you have ult. Jordan, Jordan. And then you can make a play in mid sage. Okay. Uh, it's a World War II veteran celebrating his. I, okay, so let's pause here. Jordan, Jordan. You're thinking about mids okay. and then we run away. What are you thinking? Specifically? Uh, well, Arena's already cleared most of A, so I don't want to go A. And there's probably an op somewhere on, it, on mid, so I don't want to peek that. Okay. But you have wall. Yeah. Mm. So you could wall yourself across. I mean, our arena already has a good angle. They can't really push it at all. Push with an op. They can take our time kind of with us. So, also. I don't mean, so do you think that the op is bottom mid, or do you think the op is cat? Uh, wait. Oh, my memory's going to die. Uh, what's cat again? I just want to make sure. Cat is uh, okay. Let's go to the map. My memory is so bad, especially with locations and right now. Okay, this is cat. Ah, um, no. So we think the op is somewhere in mid. Yeah. Yeah. Like the operator is here or something like that. But what we could yeah. do, we can wall ourselves across. And then we have a super fast rotate through mid to cat. Mm, that is true. Because we already know one is on B because the guy shot me there. Yeah. Mm. One thing I'm worried about is that this this rotation through, through T-spawn is not necessarily bad. I mean, it makes sense if you want to be really safe and take a really long rotation but because our arena is already looking really aggressively in CT spawn at any time she could she could get spotted at any time that she could kill somebody and then compromise her, permit, her position and then like you, you your team needs to like either like bail, bail her out or play fast as soon as that happens like you execute fast mm. and say like I, uh, yep go ahead I, I, the tempo of my team. Yeah. Mm. Let's say that uh, somebody is CT spawn, I don't know, it's a brim, whatever, and then Reyna kills the brim. But now, other people, let's say that she has uh, two other people, we have a Reyna, let's say Reyna is, mid is market, and then we say we have a Killjoy, who is, I don't know, she's like heaven or something. 
As soon as this Brim dies, they know where the Vayner is, they're going to collapse on this Vayner. So yeah. soon that she's your Vayner is gonna die for like after she gets your flank kill. And then she has to like play much more passively or or otherwise look to escape somewhere. And then while all this is happening, you wanna execute as fast as possible. You wanna abuse the fact that your Vayner is baiting a lot of attention. As soon as she makes contact with somebody, she's gonna bait a lot of attention. They're gonna all gonna think, oh, I need to flush out this rat in our back line. We need to deal with this vein as, as fast as possible. Yeah. And while that's all happening, execute fast. Put the wall mid, run mid. As soon as you get to like mid cubby or like cat, or whatever, at that time, probably Reyna will have made a play or she's probably made contact with somebody. And then whatever happens, now you're much closer to plant to A. And now the enemy team, they have to worry about, do I deal with this bomb plant or do I deal with this Reyna? So I get a lot more value for that. Mm. So play faster, play off your teammates, and you have a whole minute. So you could also decide not to go directly to A, but maybe you push through tree to regroup with your arena. After she gets a kill, you group your arena, and now you have like control of like this to make it safe for her. If she gets swung, then you can like swing and trade her out, whatever. You have a lot more options. Instead of taking this long rotation where like this whole time that you take this long rotation through T-spawn, like Urena could already like like die or something. And then you lose control yeah. of like whatever areas that she controlled. Mm. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> it's a World War Two. So here we're making this long mutation. Okay, like fine. This is expected. She That's finds someone on CT spawn ready. and she gets traded out. And now we're if walking. We were, she wouldn't get traded out. If you were there, you can it's execute even faster. Really nice you probably won't be able to trade out because you're still like say, <laughs> say like right around here, you decide to wall mid, run across mid, and then it's she World gets War this kill, she gets treated like five seconds later. Birthday. That's the only option. It's like, Ready? When this happens, you could well you actually could maybe have pushed through smoke. Like if you if you walled the mid, you could have maybe pushed through your wall and then kill those two people bottom mid. Yeah, because the brooms are wide open. Yeah. There. Well at least you had you would have more options, right? Here you don't have any option. Your only option is to money for knife out. But you, you don't even do it because you want to pay attention to what happened on the minimap. Here you're walking for no reason. Okay, now you really realize nice that man. there's no point. Here you should grab the orb. You should pass the bomb to your sage so she can plant while you ult. Yeah, that's calf, man. You're not on the ulti makes sense, but you need the sage to plant while you, you, you get value from your ult. may include a change in skin color to red or black, numbness, swelling, pain, skin, redone, and coolness. Don't actually know what utility your CH has. She's playing Hell. I'm not sure if you guys close the door, but this here you, you're too concerned about playing. Again. Probably the best mm. crossfire you, that you guys can have. So here it's a two v two. We can set up a crossfire however we like want. Let's go to the map. The best crossfire that we can set up. Is that Sage is is at hell? Actually, let's do Sage is at hell, and then you're in A main, and you're playing off each other. Where if somebody like your line of sight is this, and then Sage's line of sight is also this, exactly. So if anybody if they come door, they push through, they automatically come to a full 180 degree crossfire. Yeah. Okay. Now let me ask you this: Who should make first contact? I should. Why is that? I have a self heal, and I have a getaway. I mean, Sage has a self heal as well. I mean, she's stuck underneath her. Okay. Let me ask you this: Your angle is like this, which actually extends to heaven. 
but Sage's angle is like this, which does not cover heaven. Yeah. So now who should make first contact? Sage, yeah. The Sage, right. Because what could happen is that you're sitting in a main, you think you have a crossfire, you actually do, but not if somebody comes from heaven and then peeks you. They could be on heaven, take this one moment with you, then they drop down, take the one moment with the Sage. Mm. So that's not what we, want to, what we want to have happen. That's two v one wins in a row. Instead, we want to have two two v ones in a row. Okay. So. So what you want to do is like, you can play left side or you can play right side, and you wait for your sage to make contact. Let's say the unrafters they drop down, they get shot in the back by sage, and then you swing out and you trade. Alternatively, mm -hmm. somebody could be door, they come out in the middle of sight, whatever, and then they make contact with your sage, you swing out from your main, shoot them in the back. Yeah. Hmm. So, alternatively, again, you don't have to like full hind, but as long as you play safe and play uncommitted until your sage makes contact. So, alternatively, just like before, you can still hold this angle, so in case of someone's door, in case they go generator, left side generator, you can at least spot it, maybe take a free, shot, free shots or whatever, but just as long as you're not committed to this 1v1, make sure you stay alive for the crossfire. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so back to cool LC. We're too focused on, on this splank here, where what's going to happen is that your stage is going to get pushed. What, what could happen is that your stage is, gets pushed 2v1, she dies, and now then you get pushed 2v1. I don't think done? Jordan thought. Is it done? Yes, it's, it's, it's it. gone. I don't think Jordan saw that one. Nice. I saw it. No, so, no, stage kind of carried, she's I'm popped up cool. there. I'm but well, not, mm. you can't always whine that every round. I think I make a mistake here. Yeah, I have to go to my armor. I thought they were going to do an actual woman, and I would be very. You really far pushed up with uh, with bomb as well. Um, I think I make a mistake here. I think I remember I do make a mistake here. So we're already peaking a lot of angles. A lot of angles. A lot of angles. At any point, we could have got found ourselves in a committed 1v1. And then the only way to escape the situation is by like just winning, like hard winning the one we won. Just headshotting the other person. You know, Medusa's not real. I know, but it could be not. Okay, we're too focused. Like, we're just trying to hide for some reason. Like, we need to decide. We need to break this wall and run away, or just run away immediately, or, or something. Oh, like, make some, commit to some decision here. Not safe for work. You generally, you should just break the wall. Even if you decide to run away, you should break the wall and then run away. That's not bad. Yeah. The cookie has a dick. Another white swing. Again, your team is, is, is too far away to help you. That's a nice gray green color. Like you're peeking all these angles, but like you could get shot from, like you could find yourself on one one against any of these angles here. And your team is like nowhere near you. I actually know how it looks like. I do get a big kills. You'll get it on the real anyway, so. You should also not. You'll get it on the. Especially to knife is fine, knifing is not. So. It's a it's bad. I have a You look at your team here. Your team is actually like walking up cat, right? And you actually jump on this thing, you've made noise. You look at look at your minimap now. No circle, no circle. As soon as you jump, a circle. Wow. That means you've made noise to all of those areas within the, that circle. You know how this, like... Then around here, you switch to your knife. Uh, your team is still like trying to keep quiet. Get it on the... And your knife. And now you have another sickle. So if somebody was tree, if somebody was glass, if somebody was like generator, or even like bottom mid, pizza, CT spawn to some extent, all those areas, they would have heard your knife and given away like your, your team's position. Yeah. Anyway, so. And then here's the knife. Dude, maybe. it's never me. <laughs> <Yeah>. All that. <laughs> you look at them all, though. 
Except for that foot, that foot was really good. So most likely that, that save was ready for your jet because you made noise. What the fuck? <laughs> the turtles are fucking crazy. Why do, what is this turtle? Why does it have so many teeth? Oh my, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I think this is the right decision here. You were originally thinking is, you should go garage, but I think that's gonna take teeth. too much time. Oh my, what the fuck? Here I would use wall because you can't really peek both CT spawn and market at the same time. Fuck you. And you're also on a, a tight timer here, so I would burn wall to block off CT spawn. Easy, yeah. why does it, what is this turtle? Why does it have so many teeth? Oh my. Here you don't even look at CT spawn at all. You look at a wall of CT spawn. Now you have a sliver of CT spawn in your view, but your crosshair is nowhere near that. Fuck. And now our back is turned to CT spawn while we peek the market. Yeah. yeah. So use your utility to help clear angles yeah, or help up. isolate angles. They look so nice from the outside. That's a good kill. Like it? Yeah, you'll never Jesus see turtles Christ, the same. Ten seconds left. What the fuck are these teeth on the tongue as well? Like, hello. You so we should probably have covered you there. Let's Christ, see what he was looking at. You so we should look at backside. Instead, he's looking at nothing. What he's looking to drone. But because your team was like running super fast to B, you didn't have time to actually clear sight, you didn't have time to clear back sight, so you don't actually know if someone's back sight hiding. So, issue of your silver there, your silver should have covered you, just in case. Okay, so, after we plant, and then we jump onto lane, I'll pause here. Yep. What's up? I want to see space here, so I want to go close the door. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so you want to close the door? Yeah. What else are you thinking? Or is that it? Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so closing the door does make sense. The problem is that we don't have information about the enemy team. They, there could be somebody in market right now, and we might not even have time to close the door. Alternatively, there could be someone in B garage right now, and then we don't have time to close the door. They peek me in. So, one option to close the door safely is to use your wall, use your utility to isolate angles so that you only worry about one angle at a time. Yeah. So, for one example, you could wall off garage and then keep your crosshair placed on market while you run over to close the door. Mm hmm. Yeah, probably should have done that. Alternatively, I'm not even sure if, if door is really a big deal because let's say you find out that, yeah, somebody's at door and then they break it, and then what? You're still back to a 2v2 situation. Like, instead, mm. what, I, what, what I would look to do is to set up a crossfire with my silver as fast as possible. Yeah. So, whatever silver is like. Where we position, I guess right now he's pushing on on B stairs. Maybe I'll hug like this this corner to my left here. Hello. Or maybe if I can, I'll get into garage. I think garage would be really strong. Plus right. So let's say for example, let's go to the map. Yeah. Okay, so we are on B site. If we assume that Silva stays on B stairs, then this angle, side garage, is really strong. Because as the enemy team, they push out of market, they come lane, they push out of market, they come B stairs, they push out of CT, they come B stairs. You have a great off angle on all of that. And then while they turn to look at you, then your Sova can push out from B stairs and also shoot them in the back. Yeah. Okay. So that's one example situation, but it depends where silver kind of ends up. Okay. Mm. So back to real C. So if we're choosing to close the door, we should make the play as fast as possible. The, the longer that we take to close the door, the less likely that we're going to have time to close the door before we run into somebody. Second thing is that if we do spot someone, like here we will be really careful because we're really exposed. We want to be really careful that 
we might run into somebody and we might need to get disengaged if possible because if you look at Osova's positioning, Osova is just hiding on sight. Like, he's yeah. just hiding on sight, just droning. He's droning, like, half of CT spawn right now. But here we, we crouch, which is like, which makes it really more committed. And we're not able to like, take advantage of our silver at all. There's actually not like really teeth there. Um, but birds have those too. What the fuck? <laughs> and if you're the silver, don't do this. You should teeth there. Um, first not play this angle because you can get spammed to right? That's why there's a bunch of bullet holes here already. And second, when you're in a 1v2 situation, you actually want to take the initiative and try to isolate a 1v1 before the enemy team forces a 2v1. Yeah. Here he's just hiding, 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 but eventually a 2v1 happens. Because, like, uh, he literally sits while the Euro is midair. Again? If he, if he goes like the next frame or the one frame before, um... like one frame before he does. The Yuri is yeah. midair for like a, for like most of that. Yeah, that's fine. The problem is that this is a nearly a two a one v two situation. Yeah. Or, or like a a one v two uh, like crossfire basically like a double peak. And if you're yeah. if you play this passive when you're in a down situation, then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get double swung by two people. While well, the euro swings while well, this molly goes off, well, assuming that wing is about to peak B stairs. So instead of like doing this, try to take initiative. I know you're not the over here, but if you do find yourself in this kind of situation, take the initiative so that you can isolate a one one with the euro. Like say if you if you push lane, isolate a one one with the euro, and then it becomes a one one with just you and Brim with, with bomb planted. Yeah, which is a lot more winnable compared to if you just sit sight. <laughs> Jordan. Let's assume jump peek there. I will get the orb first. Oh. Okay, the UFC is getting orb. You're way too far ahead of your team. Oh. Even like here, okay, okay. This is ex semi acceptable because your jet's with you to some extent. And then, even though you're, you're kind of stacked on top of her, so it's not really ideal. But then, now we're deciding to. To push, but if we look where our team is, like half our team is like still at the orb, and then our jet is still at least two seconds behind us. I mean, so we flash. I, I don't want to... Now we entry. Get this. We see someone there, and then the only reason that we're able to convert this is because oh. jet is also dashing into sight, <laughs> getting what you till. Close the door. Now your team needs to depend. The heck was Silver doing this whole time? Is he darting? Is he droning? Okay, he was he was droning. Okay. Oh no, he was darting. Sorry. Okay, it's a bridge. It's a bridge. Are you serious? What happened to your jet? Your jets. Pick the winner. Okay, unfortunate. It was pretty obvious. That's true. Oh. Good kill. Oh. Now you see the play off your team. Mm. So, 4v1 situation. Let's pause here and let me ask you, what are you thinking? Service beacon tree. Ryan is coming from CT. Okay. So, guys, probably in that tiny little area between where service beacon and where Rain is. Okay, so you know, you know the usual kill drift plants. He's probably like somewhere right where the Yuri died, right there. So tree. Yeah. Okay, so then, ideally, you would cross right with your Sova here. Although Sova is like kind of aggressively peeking into into uh, door. So unfortunately, because of this this geometry here, we're not really able to swing with him until about now. But we don't want to commit, though. We don't want to commit. You manage to kill the one once, you win the one one, which is great. But generally, when you're in an advantage situation, or when you don't have to commit, then you shouldn't commit. Yeah. So first thing is that you white swung again. Second thing is that you decide to crouch and spray, which is a very committed action. 
Luckily, your, your, your silver kind of swings with you. I think that time was just kind of coincidental. Bro! I'm the boy! Oh. I said that's it. This shrimp. No, you got your ults, greats. You can usually use it to take a site or take map control. Yeah. See, so you're just making the exact same wall play. You abuse it for it. You're nice. Reloads. Break more sections of the wall. You have greats. Hopefully, you communicate with your team like, "Hey, I'm ulting." Even if you don't use the, use uh, your voice, at least you can like use the the in-game wheel or whatever to say like spam your, your alt is ready voice line so your team has like yeah. some indication like yeah this this phoenix he's he's spamming his alt voice line he's probably gonna alt so your team can like get ready for this push or get ready to push with your alt yeah here would actually Starfish wait a split second because your sage is reloading just minor detail it's just reloading and then okay we alt and then we're about to push in, but the problem is our team is still sitting, they haven't budged at all. And they're still sitting in lobby. So your, your team is a couple seconds behind. I guess not much you could do, they should be more ready than that. What is it doing? You want to do help our Sage as much as possible. Oh, she's dead. I didn't tell the guy not to kill him. I'm actually surprised that she did not die. So we see that there's one tree. We see that the kill is two in heaven. And then let's see. Well, sage plants generator. Okay, she's planting safe. Okay, that's fine. So I I like, told yeah. not to plant because if uh you know because she'll just get detained. Yeah. Get caught in that other. She's gonna get detained, so she has to get out. What I would do actually is that I would wait inside the smoke. I know what you're thinking is that you want to escape. The killjoy's radius, but you still have about 10 seconds before you actually get detained. But what could happen is that your sage could find herself in a 1v1. She could get pushed by someone from door, she could get pushed by people at heaven. When that happens, we want to trade her out. Instead of letting her die alone. Mm -hmm. So here you have the right idea, hide in the smoke. You got too scared just because the killjoy ult is happening, but again, you have time to wait it out. Or at least wait until like two seconds left and then you run away. Oh, this whole time, like now Sage is like pushing to door. I would actually, like, I'm really surprised that she didn't die. Now she dies. What is he doing? The shrimp is an idiot. Nice. Careful about pushing this. Your, your soul is, not, is still idiot. not with you. What I would do is that I would use your wall, put a wall between you and generator so that you can cross into the site safely. Instead of like right now you're kind of stuck with your solo, you, you want to like gain as many angles as possible. Well, like you, so that you guys can push from multiple angles at the same time. Here, yeah, another wide swing. Our solo is still trapped in a main. Nice. Big kill. Okay. What, what's happening? So you're winning a lot of 1v1s. But again, it's not something you can rely on all the time. I would get the orb. Always think about getting free okay, orbs. Okay, so we know that someone is lane. Wait, because we're careful of picking this no, team that we've yet. I to see this shit drizzled and come. There's a lot of white swing, like this is a really wide swing here. It's the fucking mouth. <laughs> this is like a wide swing and we're too far away from cover. We're committed to the fighting this this sage. But really we just we just need to like like um play a bit more safely or or jiggle more angles, wait for our team to catch up. Yeah. I, st oh, I still mentally thought she was on side because uh, <laughs> I lost her in that lane there. Say again? If you go, I lost her in the lane there. Like she was soon with the bulldog down that way. Makes sense. Okay, ready? Right there. Yep, so someone is lane. It's the fucking. With like 5, 6, 7, 8 seconds above. 
Yeah. Mom was just like, this. You keep white speaking too much. Uh, yeah, this is uh, timing, I guess. I should just learn a little bit more. And, uh, mm. minor detail, but if you're trying to heal yourself, it's actually faster to left click at the ground compared to a right click, which is more of like a lob. Yeah. So the right click has like a tiny bit of air time on like a second or whatever. Whereas if you left click, it hits the ground immediately. You see, like you already right clicked and now you're already able to use, you got your knife out. But the Molly hasn't hit the ground yet, so it's not actually healing you. Now it's, now it's healing you. Do you want to peek this too early? You can get the kill, but again, it's another 1 1. <laughs> Ready? You have a flash, you can play aggressive, but not anymore. Okay, let's pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Uh, don't know where everyone else is. We know where one is. So, I could peek here and there could be like three guys there. So, I'm kind of scared. Okay, so you think you're just going to hide in sight? You're going to hide where you are sitting currently? I should, but I think mean, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Or did. Then uh, let's talk about angles again. Okay, so our jet is back site. We are around this corner. There's a sage wall here, and. Oh, Sage is actually in like the middle of nowhere. Someone. Say again? Someone, someone we did, I did confirm with my flash that someone is CT. I don't remember who, but someone is there. Somebody is CT. One person. One person, okay, we'll say Reyna, whatever. Reyna is CT. Okay. Hmm. What else is going through your mind? Ah, uh, we need more info. Why is that? Why do you think you need more info? Um... Well... We're kind of holding pretty weird angles. Um, the jet's holding a really good angle. Uh, I'm in an awkward position. I'd preferably want to move back closer to the jet. And the server. Not, not so the sage. Here's a... Hmm? Sage. Oh, say it, say it, say it, say it. Okay, so, um, more, more information is nice, but you don't have any utility to get that information. You already spent your last flash, but your positioning, your team's positioning is actually really good. At least you and the jet are really, is really well positioned right now. Because what's going to happen, and especially your sage, even though she's like, she's positioned in like the middle of nowhere, she should be like hugging this or or that's probably her best option. Probably hugging the, the middle of site boxes. One option could be here, but this is kind of what this box is here is wall bangable, so I'm not sure if I would recommend it. But you know that this lane is like walled off, so the only angle you have to worry about is stairs. Yeah. Right. And then we talk about uh, angles. This is your angle, and then this is Jet's angle. Again, where is the intersection point? So here. So you guys already have like an automatic crossfire. Okay. They're gonna be looking jet's way, so the second they peek me, jet should peek because they're gonna see me. Yes, exactly. So ideally jet should hide. It's like she shouldn't peek first, because what's gonna happen is that she could take an engagement here and then you're they're not able to help her out. Yeah, they're gonna try pre fire her. At best, you can maybe like play close to this corner and then swing out when that happens, but ideally, she should not peek out too early. Ideally, what should happen is that you're holding this angle, enemy team pushes into your line of sight, you start shooting each other, then the jet will peek out, and then force this to become a 2v1. Alternatively, yeah. your sage can also peek, about, peek around the boxes like this, or peek around the boxes like this. And then have another 3v1. 
So yeah, if your team plays it correctly, you basically only have one angle to worry about, and you can also you ha you automatically have a crossfire if you just if you guys time it correctly. If you know if you guys understand like who should be making first contact. So in this case, you should be making first contact so that everyone else will intersect on that line. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So that would be the ideal scenario. What's probably going to happen is that one or two people go here, whereas the third person probably is going to go and break the wall. So that throws a little wrench. Now, now you guys have to worry about timing. Think about which angle is going to come first. Like who's going to push first? Is it going to be lane or is it going to be stairs? But in either case, you still act as the bait. You still try to make first contact with this guy. You try to still try to make first contact with Thane if that's possible. And then as soon as you make contact with either angle, then your jet can swing out this way. Or your jet can swing out this way. Or your sage can swing out this way. Or your sage can swing out that way. Mm. Uh this is my brain. How do you how do you ever like you have so many decisions, but how do you decide on what to do, actually? Um, it just depends on the situation. All mm. the time I'm thinking about where the enemies can be, where, what angles like, they can come from. Because I know that this is walled off, then I don't have to worry about lane until the wall is broken. I only have to look at, at these stairs. Okay, So now I, I position myself some, some place that I can cover B series, so this is like one option where I just, I just happen to find myself here. Next thing is that I look at the minimap. I look at where is my team positioned and how can I play off my teammates. So for example, if our jet happens to be right next to us, then this is not great because we're stacked on top of each other. So then I would consider, okay, maybe I'll rotate around and maybe I'll play backside and then maybe I'll play of contact of our jet. Right? Sorry, sorry. I'm just thinking I'm kind of blacked out for a second. Okay, do you have any questions mm. so far? Uh, not really. Just, mm. Okay, so one is awareness, two is like understanding of angles. So, so one is awareness and, and positioning. Second is awareness of like angles, understanding of angles and like where intersection points happen, which is where crossfires happen. Third thing is like knowing or having a general idea of where the enemy can and cannot be as like as well as like what information you've gained throughout the round. And then fourth is going to be timing. So once you know that someone is going to make first contact, let's say it's a jet who makes first contact, now it's up to the other person, let's say if you're backside, it will be up to you so that you time your peak correctly. You don't want to peak too early such that you peak before a jet makes contact and now you fight someone over here. Now this is the only one that you don't, you don't want to take. Or at least yeah. you don't want to be committed to this only one. You want to be able to survive to fight in this in the crossfire. You can fight with the fight with your jet. Oh, yeah. So the timing to know that when jet does make contact, then we swing out. And we also don't want to swing out too late because what could happen is that this person can come here, peek the jet, kill the jet, and then maybe have time to peek us next. And by that time if we if we peek out we'll be too late. Yeah. Um, and, hmm. But yeah, oh, yeah, if you play all this correctly, because there's only one angle to worry about, or maybe even just two angles to worry about, that most likely your your team will be able to win the round. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Back to VLC. Just the fucking tool. So let's see. Unfortunately, we spent all the utility. So now we video. can only just peek. Make sure we time our peaks correctly. Hi. 
I mean, that's just see. the fucking tool of music. Why did we decide to swing? We swung because our sage made contact. Unfortunately, our sage should not have made contact, but because she did, we decided to swing. Okay. We get the kill. Now we have to turn around and shoot the eyeball. We have to shoot the eyeball. We have to shoot the eyeball. You didn't turn around at all. It is fake, right? So, rain eyeballs is very similar to like a sage wall where, like, you just shoot it in. Yeah, you need to, like, the longer the, 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 the eyeball stays up, the more and more value it's going to get. Obviously, it doesn't last like 45 seconds, but it lasts at least two seconds, which is like a lot of value, a lot of time, where the Reina and her team can push with the eyeball, and until the eyeball is popped, she knows, and she and her team knows that. Your team cannot peek because you'll you'll be blinded, or you'll be nearsighted rather. So, mm. in order um, to like prevent that from happening, you have to shoot the eyeball as fast as possible, as soon as yeah. soon as possible. The only alternative right. is if you, in specific scenarios, if you were trying to stay stealthy, then okay, you might consider not shooting the eyeball. Yeah, but because your position is already known. Because the jet position is most likely known, then it's better to just shoot the eyeball and, rather than worry about like giving away your, your position. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be that guy. Yep. Uh, I um, I need to quickly go do something quickly. Uh, do you want to finish up maybe tomorrow? Um, we do the last little, put the last little few rounds and the what do you call this? Yeah, if that's fine with you. Uh, well, there's, only, bit... there's only seven minutes left. You think you can finish today, or you have to do it tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, roll well, tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. It's it's been really informative so far. I kind of realized a bit, quite a bit. All right. Cool. Huh. Learn a bit, a lot. I need I need to start reviewing my own game list, especially because I use insights and I can just re record it quickly. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So uh, what's that? What's that website you use where you can actually see the map? I uh, just kind of Google it. It's called Strat Rat. Just like whatever that has a Valorant map, I can draw on it. Okay. Cool. There's, there's probably some other ones there too, but I just use this one. Thanks so much. All right. No problem. All right. I'll pack on tomorrow. All right. See ya. Cool. See ya.